Oh, comfort. Their names resonate through time. Their reputations made in games such as these. Their legacy has been passed to athletes of equal dimension. With a chance to make their mark in time. Today, two present day classics, the division finals, and one step closer to the Grey Cup. The following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. You know this could be huge. The matchups are perfect, and these guys can play. Doug and the Blue are out to kick some birds. He'll fire at will. Pinball can bake the best of teams, and today it's some special brand of dome cooking. But everyone knows Tracy's hard to catch, especially when there's a salt on his tail. Carter and the Alouette team never let up. They hit hard and party harder. But wait, there's more. Sandusky and the Snowman scored at will last week. The road to the top may be slippery, but Dave can keep his feet on the ground and his hands on the ball. One step closer. Can you say intense? Final Sunday will be contested at points east and west today. We start at Skydome in Toronto, where the road to the Grey Cup has seemed destined to stop all season long. And when the Argonauts and Alouettes have rendered a climate-controlled decision, it's off to Calgary, where the elements will have more to do with the outcome of this West Division final, the provincial matchup of the Stampeders and the Eskimos. Welcome to the CFL on CBC. Four teams go into final Sunday, and only two come out. I'm Scott Oak in Calgary, where it's about minus 20, and the Eskimos and Stampeders are about three hours away, but the Argonauts and Alouettes are all set at Sky Dome, so let's go there now and join Mark Lee. Well, Scott, the last time the Argos and the Alouettes played in the Eastern Final, it was 1973. Joe Theismann was at quarterback for the Argos. CFL Commissioner Larry Smith was scoring a touchdown in overtime for the Alouettes in a 32-10 win. Well, 23 years later, the names have changed, but the goal is just the same, a trip to the Grey Cup. Now, it's Doug Flutie and the Argos versus Tracy Hamm and the Montreal Alouettes. It is a dream matchup of last year's Grey Cup quarterbacks, Ham prevailing last November. But take a look at this. One look at the tail of the tape, and it points to a pair of prolific passers at playoff time. Flutie and Ham measuring themselves against each other again today in the Eastern Final. Here in the booth, Chris Cuthbert, ni nicely back from the Montreal hockey game, and blocking for him this afternoon, James Curry, always looking for elbow room in the press box. Chris, let's talk about the season series. The Argos uh, winning 2-0 this year, but a lot has changed since August 1st, the last time they played. Absolutely. Really deceiving because Mike Pringle didn't play in those two games, and Tracy Ham barely did either. Alouettes are the best running team in the CFL all year, and they're even better with Pringle. Can the Argos stop Mike Pringle today? That's a key to victory. And a lot of the responsibility falls on North Bay, Ontario's Michael O'Shea. Is O'Shea going back to Hamilton next week for the Grey Cup? Well, he'll have to stop Pringle to do that. Well, when you look at the Montreal defensive line, it's anchored by Doug Peterson, but two outstanding rush guys, Grant Carter and Alfred Payton. Carter tied for the CFL lead this season in sacks, but Alfred Payton came in halfway through and contributed a lot. They're going to be working against probably the best offensive line in the CFL this season in Toronto, only allowing 18 quarterback sacks versus their quarterback. And Mike Kislak anchors that offensive line. He was the Eastern nominee for the most outstanding offensive lineman in the league. All right, guys, all the ingredients for a great offensive show here this afternoon. The Argos, nine and a half point favorites to beat the defending Grey Cup champions, the Montreal Alouettes. It's the East Final coming up in moments from now. Now back to Scott in Calgary. All right, Mark, it won't be a game of chance with the weather in Toronto, but it will be here in Calgary for the Eskimos and Stampeders. Forecast high for kickoff is about minus 15. Just the kind of day that big offensive linemen like Chris Walby like 16 years in the league. And last week, the man bomber teammates called Bluto earned his 11th All-Star selection. We're delighted to have Chris Walby along as our game day analyst. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Scott. It's great to be here. It's electric. Chris, you know all about protection, so let's talk first of all about the Montreal-Toronto final. Will this game boil down to the Alouettes getting to Doug Flutie, and is that possible? In one word, yes. And as James said earlier, two people, 
Alfred Payton, Grant Carter. But the reason is because they are unorthodox pass rushers, and by that I mean they don't always rush outside. They will try to beat the tackle inside, which will cause confusion to Doug Flutie because they're not worried about keeping contain on him, and that will cause some problems. All right, here in Calgary, the Eskimos and Stampeders will have to contend with frigid conditions. Will this boil down to a game of survival in the West? Well, it's snowing a little bit down here, and there's a little bit of a light snow covering on the field. But I think when it comes down to a one-game Going to the Grey Cup match here, you're going to wear whatever you can on your shoes. You're going to put screws on, you're going to have toilet plungers, you're going to have peanut butter cups, whatever you have to use. Roof tacks, we use them, they will use them. Watch for it out here. Perfect, then. This telecast is off to a hot start with that revelation of a use of screws by our game day analyst, Chris Walby. And as we go along this afternoon, we'll also get Chris's thoughts on the dismissal of Cal Murphy in Winnipeg this week. The Eskimos and Stampeders will take the field here in about three hours. The Owls and Argos on the field at Sky Dome. Here again is Mark. All right, Scott, comfortable conditions under the big top here in Toronto at the Sky Dome as we await the two best teams in the CFL's East Division, the Argos and Alouettes. The winner goes to the Grey Cup, the loser goes home. Chris and James, take it away. Thank you, Mark. And what an atmosphere here at Sky Dome, and it is a late-arriving crowd. A long lineup for tickets outside. There's Bob Price, who was on the same side as Don Matthews last year in Baltimore. What a great job he's done as head coach after an 0-3 start than Don Matthews has won a great cup with the BC Lions, with the Baltimore Stallions, and now with his eye on a trip to another great cup next week in Hamilton. We're underway with the East Final, and it's Mike Pinball Clements from his own 20-yard line, finding a seam. Pinball, and he's going to score. There are no flags. How about this? Mike Clements, touchdown. talk this week about Clemens being overlooked for all-star consideration he made an enormous statement to open the football game well Chris when you get down to this time of the year special teams always make a statement it could be the decisive factor if you recall the great cup last year with Chris Wright taking that punt back all the way for a touchdown and put Calgary in a huge deficit Mike Pinball Clemens has always been an outstanding player in special teams he opens up the game today with the opening kickoff. Takes it back for six. Doug Flutie was recounting that game last week and how critical special teams were. There was a blocked punt for a touchdown. There was the Chris Wright return of a touchdown in the Grey Cup game. It really cost Flutie and the Stampeders last year. It unsettled the Calgary Stampeders, and now the Argos doing it against well, the always, Baltimore Stallions. You always talk about special teams. Dale Adrellin has gotten a lot of credit for the special teams here in Toronto. Mike Pinball Clemens and Jimmy Cunningham are two great return men, and what you get in that type of factor with players who are blocking, who are players who will go down and hustle every play, because every time those players touch the ball, there's an opportunity to take it back for great field position or six points. You know, he's always smiling, but when we talked to him about being overlooked as an all-star, he had an edge to him. He was disappointed, and he said, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. Hey, hey, hey. Number that two all-purpose. Well, sometimes you wonder what they're sister looking at. Sister is here today visiting. It's her birthday. Her name's Betty Lee, my wife's sister. Happy birthday, sweetie. Well, that's a heck of a birthday present for a sister-in-law to take the opening kickoff back. But... You know, it's hard to overlook a guy with the contribution that he has made. A former outstanding player in the CFL 1990s MVP, but Mike Clemens, just an outstanding individual and great effort. Well, there are the numbers from Mike Clemens. Not selected as an Eastern All-Star. Well, I can understand what he says. What does it take to make an All-Star team when you look at his numbers, second or third or even leading the CFL in certain, certain categories? The numbers speak for themselves. Mike Clemens is very deserving of an all-star nomination. There was a roughing call against the Argos on the convert, which was good. And so they kick it from back at their 20-yard line. And the ball returned close to the 45 by Lewis Fight, a 17-yard return. So the Alouettes will have the first play from scrimmage this afternoon. Tracy Ham, the Grey Cup MVP last year, a solid playoff resume and an outstanding year and
James, I thought the perfect Tracy Ham game last week against Hamilton. They rushed for 213 yards. He passes for 217 yards. That's the kind of balance that Montreal has better than anyone else in the league. First down from the 44, and the pitch goes to Pringle. He'll try the left side. Great pursuit by the Argos, and Pringle spilled heavily out of bounds. Adrian Smith was the man who wouldn't let him turn the corner. Well, we'll set the Alouette offense for you. A huge offensive line anchored by Neil Fort, 6'7", 310 pounds. They really set a tone for Pringle up front. And Mike Pringle, 825 yards rushing in just eight games this year. And he was the CFO outstanding player in 1995. It's second down, almost 10. And out of the backfield, incomplete to Pringle. And you can see he is strapped up heavily on that left elbow. Well, you know, that's going to be a concern. Can Mike Pringle reach down and catch the football out of the backfield today? Because he doesn't have the mobility and the flex in that left arm that you see heavily bandaged right there. It's going to be a concern how that arm holds up over the game. He is wearing a brace. It was dislocated a few weeks ago, and the Alouettes felt his season might have been over, but Pringle would not be denied and he is in today terry baker is two to punt on third down and donald smith with a big rush that forced baker to rush the kick it's a short one and it goes out of bounds at the 37 so just a 27 yard punt special teams already making a difference in toronto well a big start for the argos with the mike clemens kickoff return but Doug Flutie will hope to set a tone offensively as well. Score more points, that's the bottom line. Do whatever it takes to stick the ball in the end zone, score as many points as you can, and, and hope it's enough. Um, Tracy's going to move the ball. I mean, he, he does an excellent job of moving the football, and uh, we feel we have a good offense and we can move the ball as well. Doug was saying there is a tendency in playoff games to be a little more conservative, but Don Matthews wants him to play Flutie ball. And be wide open today. First carry is by Robert Drummond. And a short gain for Drummond. Well, Doug Flutie ball is wide open football. He's a player that you really can't get a gauge on. So when you sit back and you try to just play conservatively, he'll take advantage of that. Alouettes have a tendency of being a slow starting offense. It seems to take them a while to get their ground game under attack. But Doug Flutie, by contrast, is a quick starter. His opening two series this year very effective and he has Paul Mazzotti for a catch near the 50 yard line and that should be a first down for the Argonaut offense a lot of talk about the offensive lines this week Mike Kisselak and company allowing just 18 sacks on the season and Robert Drummond Doug Flutie says if Drummond is having a big day so are we well he, he's a guy that can explode he can carry the mail out of the backfield plus he can also catch in the flat first and ten and Flutie. There's Mike Clements. Clements with a move on Irv Smith, and now he is drilled out of bounds by the middle linebacker, Paul Randolph. And they'll mark it at the 53, a gain of four for Pinball Clemens. Randolph, the leader of this defense. He won a great cup with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers back in 1990. Leonard Renfro is the newcomer at nose guard. He is the only starter on this defensive team that has not won a Grey Cup. So this is an extremely experienced and talented defense for Montreal. It's second down, and again, Mazzotti has a first down catch. And into Montreal territory at the 45, Tracy Gravely, who led the CFL in tackles, makes the stop, but it's an 11-yard pickup. And already Doug Flutie has changed up the scheme of things in his offense. He has gone to Paul Mazzotti early, normally as Mike Pinball Clemens, to get his offensive kick started. But Paul Mazzotti, normally the lone receiver backside, has caught the first two. Mazzotti with a couple of touchdowns against Montreal during the regular season. First down, Argonauts. And Flutie again going back to Mazzotti, and he catches it in front of Irv Smith. 
Ball at the 37-yard line, and that's a gain of close to eight. We've seen this before, James, where Doug Flutie will keep going back to the same play if it's open. Well, that's what they're doing. They're lining up with the trip right formation, and what's happening is that you're getting Tyrone Williams and Dwayne Demetrician running off the coverage. Mazzotti's coming back underneath on a short curl, and he's wide open with no coverage. Paul Mazzotti already three catches, 27 yards, checking out of the game on this short yarded situation for the Argonauts. And they put Reggie Givens in at fullback in this formation, so look for some big horses going up the middle with he and Drummond. Second and two. Flutie on a roll. Clements is wide open. Pinball Clements down the sidelines, and he skips out of bounds inside the 15. So nothing conservative about the Argos on second and two. 25 yards on that pickup by Mike Clements. You talk about pulling out all stops and not playing conservative at all. In a short yardage situation, you often think the team should gamble. This is a situation with Mike Clemens. It's not really a gamble because you have a lot of big guys in linebacker short at the line of scrimmage, and he's off in the flat one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Clemens set the early tone, and Doug Flutie is red hot. Five for five, 57 yards to open this game. And the Argos threatening from the Montreal 12-yard line. Six receivers are out for Flutie. Lots of time over the middle. There's Clements, and this time Ken Watson nails him at the 10, just a gain of two. Ken Watson, an outstanding performance last year in the Grey Cup game. He shut down Alan Pitts. Well, he really did. He, he's an outstanding athlete. He was a former quarterback when he was in high school, so he has a good good ability to read what an offense is doing in that time when you can match up one-on-one -on -one with Mike Clemens because he can make you miss in a shoebox. So second and seven for the Argonauts. They can make a first down without scoring. Here comes the rush. Flutie looking for Mazzotti stretched out and couldn't bring it in. And so it will be third down for Toronto. You know, one of the things that make Doug Flutie so successful as a quarterback is that he likes to have the rush coming at him. And Toronto does not get worried when a defensive lineman comes through clean because what Doug can do is make someone miss. And when the player is right in his face, he can always step to the side and find an open receiver. Well, that's Grant Carter and an all-star season for him. 15 sacks. And he forces the Argonauts into a field goal situation. And this is a 16-yard attempt for Mike Vanderjet. 198 points on the year. And Vanderjet is good. So the first offensive drive for the Argonauts net points. And they're up by 10 in the first quarter. He's on the indicated elbow and a fracture in that elbow. And he'll be wearing this specially designed brace being expected by the league before today's game. It will prevent that elbow from hyperextending when he falls today. When it comes to injuries, you have to be mentally tough. And I, the trainers have been working with me um, two or three times uh, a, a day, every day, to get, you know, to get me back onto the field. They did an excellent job, and um, I'm just trying to do everything I can to um, be out here with my teammates. Well, I think it speaks volumes of how much Montreal values Mike Pringle. Tyrone Rush, 148 yards on the ground last week against Hamilton, but they're going with Pringle even with the brace today. Here's Lewis Fight trying to answer Clemens with a big kickoff return, but good downfield coverage by the Argonauts. A 13-yard return. Donald Smith with the tackle for Toronto. Well, talking about the value of Pringle, it's not the first time that that has happened. Robert Drummond replaced Mike Pringle in 1994 and had 111 yards on the ground. And the following week, Pringle had missed the game with a hamstring injury, and he was inserted back into the lineup and had a 100-yard game of his own. When you talk to the Alouette offensive personnel, they say it's not just what Pringle does on the ground, but he brings an attitude to the entire offense. First down, Alouettes. Tracy Ham goes to work. Out of the backfield it goes, and Pringle upended. Donald Smith played it perfectly. He's had an outstanding year on the corner as we set the defense for you. Rob Waldrop 
is going to see a lot of time over top of the center. Mike Withercombe, Demetrius Maxey, a former Alouette. We talked about O'Shea and what he'll have to do today. And Lester Smith was with the Baltimore Stallions Grey Cup team last year. He's particularly strong against the run. It's second down and nine as Ham rolls and unloads downfield. And that's through the hands of Jock Climby, incomplete. Tracy Ham was very fortunate that he didn't cross the line of scrimmage. That time, you know, when you were talking about what Mike Pringle brings to the lineup, he makes that offensive line become aggressive because he's one of those backs who will not wait if a hole is not there. He'll run right through. And you can see the aggression of Michael Souls and Mike Pringles coming through, picking up the blocks on the corner, allowing Tracy Ham outside. He just had too much gas on that football. Terry Baker to punt. Jimmy Cunningham is back. And what a year Cunningham has had. He'll try it from his 35, drops the ball, and pounces on it at the 40. So an anxious moment there after the 46-yard punt. Well, perhaps an uneasy feeling at the Montreal bench. Uh, you don't want to fall behind Doug Flutie 10-0 and keep giving him the ball in decent field position. Flutie and the Argos go to work at the 40, and the quick hitter to Robert Drummond, well defensed by the Alouettes. Well, that, that Montreal is not a team that's accustomed to coming from behind. They're a power team. They like to grind it out on the ground. Mike Clemens said it going into commercial that the game is not over yet, and it's going to be a long one. Well, Robert Drummond has had an exceptional year, got off to a torrid start, then tailed off at midseason, but I think the last two or three Argonaut games, he was outstanding back in form, especially against Hamilton two weeks ago. Scored the four touchdowns, he got his confidence back, and the offense really felt that he was back in stride. Second and ten, and here is Drummond again, lunging for the first down marker, and he'll be close. And I tell you, that's what Robert Drummond can give you. He can give you that burst once he's had contact with the defender. You saw he was hit three yards short of the first down, but he had that leg drive and explosion to get up close to the yard marker. Paul Randolph making the first contact on Drummond. Well, he's a tremendous athlete. He was an all-state high school basketball player as well as football player and a track star. So he has that ability in the open field to elude people and pick up extra yardage. Drummond with a couple of 100-yard rushing games this year, and one of them was against Montreal, 135 yards. Actually, that was his last 100-yard game of the year, but Robert Drummond at any point we saw in a game in Edmonton about three weeks ago where he took a, a fake snap on a, a punt attempt and took it down 53 yards in open field, so he can gallop with the best of them. It is a first down. There's Paul Randolph calling the signals defensively for Montreal. Flutie throwing and behind Clements. That may have been tipped at the line. And Flutie knew that he had an open receiver, but that's something what you get sometimes with the short quarterback. And defensive linemen, when they can get their hands up in the air, can deflect the pass by Doug Flutie. Well, there's an indication of how effective Flutie is right from the get-go. And on the first possession today, a field goal. Now looking at a second and 10 from the Toronto 51. Alfred Payton jumped, but was he pulled offside? I think you're going to get a little early movement by the offensive line when you got two defensive linemen. Doug Flutie may even be called for too much motion. Apparently not. Dave Yule is going to march it five yards forward and it'll be second and five for the Argonauts. Normally you don't stop it when the defensive yeah. linemen get into neutral zone. That's a free play for the offense and that's an advantage you have when you're able to draw them off but he killed the play early. 5.45 to go. First quarter. It's 10-0 Toronto. And the direct snap and now they flick it back to Flutie downfield and Robert Drummond's there. Robert Drummond to the 25 drop the ball and the Alouettes have it. After the gadget play worked big time for the Argos, Drummond puts it on the turf. 
Anthony Drawhorn with the recovery. I don't care what you say. You do not draw that up in the playbook. That's something that Doug Flutie orchestrates in the huddle. The direct snap back to Clemens, the pitch back to Flutie. But the hustle by the Alouette defense was Robert Drummond had got his hands on the ball. Closing on him, game tackling, knocking the ball loose. Anthony Drawhorn alert coming up with the football. Drawhorn started the season in Montreal, went to Saskatchewan, came back in his first game back, had an interception return for a touchdown. Now he has the big fumble recovery. Alouette defense number two at creating turnovers this year. And that is the seventh fumble for Drummond, the fifth one he's lost. So when you look at these two defenses, they're basically a mirror image of each other. Don Matthews had a big hand in the Baltimore scheme, and that really moved up to Montreal. And so these teams are facing each other out here today on the field. At the 24, first down. And Pringle, the first carry up the middle, large hole. And Mike Pringle is across the 35 to the 38. Ken Benson, a former Baltimore Stallion, a teammate of Pringles with the tackle. And I'll tell you what Tracy Ham did. He audibled at the line of scrimmage. Toronto brought Mike Pringle up and set him in the gap. And without a middle linebacker in the scheme, you'll see him number 50 right there. All you have to do is break that first wave and you can pick up a first down. You all ready to be number You all ready to be number 12? First down, Alouettes. And Ham going to Pringle out of the backfield. And he'll run over people this afternoon. Did that time. Ed Berry and Reggie Gibbons with the tackle on Mike Pringle. When, when you talk about desire and you look at Mike Pringle with his stats versus Toronto, the man has a big S on his chance. He's playing with that dislocated elbow. But not only that, he looks for defensive backs to run over. He's not going to be one of those out there putting a move on you. What he wants to do is make sure that your nameplate hits the turf. Second and four. Back to Pringle. And he is going to be stopped short and drilled back. And Mike O'Shea was hanging on. So that's a matchup we'll be monitoring all afternoon. And O'Shea, that time, makes the defensive stop. Well, I tell you, it wasn't an Argonaut. It was Neil Fort who slowed up Mike Pringle. He ran right up his big offensive lineman's back. Because if Fort could have gotten Giles out of the way, he would have clearly picked up the first down. Instead, third. And at least a yard. Yeah, this is the situation... You got the power running game. You got Mike Pringle. You got a 300-pound offensive line. It's early. You're down by 10. This is for a championship. You got to go for it. You say that all the time. Yeah, but you got Jimmy Cunningham back. That's instant field position. You can get your 30 on a, re on a return at any point. It's third and, and two. And so Bob Price going the conservative route. Terry Baker to punt. If Cunningham does a better job of holding the football this time. That is 30. Finds the seam. Jimmy Cunningham, always elusive, is up to the 49-yard line. So the Argos continue to enjoy good field position in this first quarter and a 10-point lead at Skydo. Bob Price was telling me he thinks his defense is a little more reckless this year than when Don Matthews was in charge, but nothing reckless about his decision to punt the ball away. Well, when you can't get your players off the line of scrimmage, as you see in the Argonauts doing a great job of the line of scrimmage, and you only get a net of 15 on the punt, I kind of like gambling for it because Jimmy Cunningham brought that one back 20 after he made the catch. Uh, it's an easy argument to make when he does get 20, but what happens if the Argos stop them on third and two and take over the football at the 40-yard line? Well, you stated he had great confidence in his defense. I'll stick with Price for the time being. Rudy's in trouble. And he spins away. One of the officials taken down as well. And the pass incomplete intended for Clements. But either, even in an incomplete pass, you see the elusive nature of Doug Flutie. You know, and what Doug Flutie does better than any player in the CFL is that he extends the time of the play. Often you'll see Doug Flutie extend the plays to five and six seconds in the pocket. He gets a great block from Dave Yule, the official right here, as Grant Carter takes him down. All he saw was a pair of white legs, and so Yule ended up being going down to the turf. But Doug Flutie is so elusive. Grant thought he had his 16th sack of the year. Well, he got one, but he just won't get it in the record books. He gets no credit for that one. The official next time will be more elusive. 
first time Dave Yule's ever been mistaken for Doug Flutie at second and 10 Toronto. And Flutie guns it downfield, almost picked off by Spencer McLennan as the pass was intended for big Tyrone Williams. I tell you, Montreal has really gotten a lot out of Spencer McClendon this year. Last year with the BC Lions, he was a backup defensive back, a special team player, but he came over in the dispersal draft, and he has really settled in at that free safety position. He's had four interceptions on the regular season, and he's really helped solidify the secondary. Here's Alfred Payton. Stopped by Chris Perez that time. Swag getting swatted on the play. Lewis fights back. As the Argos will punt, Vanderjack. Fight has to scramble over, can't field it, and it's going to bounce down near the one. What a great punt. And Fight does a nice job just to get it out to the six, but that is a 59-yard punt. And Michael O'Shea with the tackle downfield. The problem with Fight, though, is that he's too deep on the punt. He's letting the ball bounce in front of him. He needs to come back, come up some, because you can go back on it quicker than you can come up and you can gauge it better. But great coverage by the Toronto special teams once again. Fight the third punt returner for the Alouettes this year. Chris Wright, who was the brilliant rookie a season ago, was out with a knee injury. And Gary Harrell, the flea had been doing a nice job back there. Dexter Dawson, and now it's Lewis Pike and the Alouettes in a hole. Ham from his end zone, throwing incomplete, looking for Chris Armstrong over the middle. I tell you the difference in this game right now, Chris, is the Toronto defensive front. They're getting the pressure right up the middle on Tracy Ham. He doesn't have the time to sit comfortably in the pocket. Seems to be coming a regular occurrence in the CFL. Lewis Fight and Alfred Payton just had to be separated by head coach Bob Price. Payton took a shot at Fight some frustration after that bad return. Second and ten, the Alouettes on the ground. And Oscar Giles with the tackle of Mike Pringle short of the first down. So the field position game is being won right now. And already the Alouettes showing some frustration. Well, Don, with that trying to calm down Alfred Payton, but it goes back to the point when I was making that Lewis Fight had lined up too deep. He had lined up at about 50 yards on the punt. You want to line up at about 40 to 42 yards because if he gets off a good punt, you can drift back to five or six. Lewis Fight, only in his first game returning punts last week, averaged 14.3, but inexperience will cost you in a critical big game like this. You got to go right back to the opening play of the game, the kickoff return as Baker will concede two. And with under a minute to go in the first quarter, the safety conceded by the Alouettes. And, and they it's were, now 12-0. They were expecting for Fight to concede the single point on the punt. This way, they cost them two points. It's going to make it a 12-point deficit instead of 11. And in close games like this, those points cost you. Just seems like the Alouettes unsettled from the opening kickoff coming up. Second half of our big doubleheader today, the Western Final. And in the 90s, Edmonton and Calgary have written quite a script over the years. It's another frosty, frigid day at McMahon Stadium. There'll be plenty of drama there today. I think we had the experience at uh, Alberta Clipper last week ourselves out there in Edmonton, and I'm quite happy to be here under the big top in Toronto. You and Rob Waldrop. <laughs> You just won't get off of Rob. You, you don't understand. The young man grew up playing football down in Arizona. If it got below 90, they wore jackets. Had a chat with Rob this week of, about the cold, and he was uh, relieved that he didn't have to worry about a game out west this week. There's Jimmy Cunningham getting set. Not only do they concede the convert, but now have to kick it off from their own 35. So the Alouettes are in a big hole in this first quarter against the hometown Argonauts. There's Clements who started the momentum Toronto's way. And Mike Clements across the 30, upended at the 31. Alan Wetmore, first man downfield to meet number 31. Got a little help from Hensley Charles on the play, but that's an excellent job by Montreal's cover team because whenever you can limit Toronto to under 10 on a return, you've done your job. Doug Flutie off to a quick start here. Completed his first six passes. 
Flutie is a playoff quarterback, six and four, ten interceptions, nine touchdowns. And I, I think a lot of those stats colored by the fact that he played on a lot of frigid days at McMahon Stadium. Enjoying the environment here. The shovel toss to Clements inside, up to the 36. And Alfred Payton there. And what Doug Flutie is trying to do right now is keep Alfred Payton honest. He's a tremendous pass rusher, and he likes to come off that corner very hard. But what he does with the slip screen back underneath the Mike Clemens is he makes him stay closer to the line of scrimmage. Well, Doug Flutie, not a fan of how much talking Alfred will do during a game, but he does say Payton is exceptional at his position. Second down on what should be the final play of the first quarter. Mazzotti bounces off a tackle, stretches for the 45, and he'll have a first down. So a good first quarter for Paul Mazzotti, even better for the Toronto Argonauts. And through 15 minutes of this Eastern final at Skydome, it's the hometown Toronto Argonauts in charge. Mike Clements with the kickoff return set the tone. It's 12-0 after one quarter. Curry, Mark Lee, and the CFL on CBC crew. Alfred Payton zeroing in on Doug Flutie. What he can do is put a lot of pressure on an offensive tackle. He comes off that corner very hard. He's one of those players that has great balance, and he gets that shoulder dip, and he can explode out of it. Alouette's trying to shut down Flutie, and they were not able to do it in that first quarter. 113 yards of passing offense. Mazzotti had four catches, Clemens with four, Drummond with three in that first 15 minutes of play. And if not for the fumble by Drummond in Montreal territory, it could be a, an even bigger hole for Montreal. Well, that's something that uh, plagued Robert Drummond in the second half of the season. He had a, a tendency to put the ball on the ground, and it cost Toronto early when they had a chance to really put a big gap between them and Montreal. First and ten Argonauts to open the second quarter. And there's Jimmy Cunningham. Cunningham up near midfield, and he has a gain of nine. Tracy Gravely, the leading tackler in the CFL, there to meet Cunningham, who for the most part this year was a wide out, but playing more inside now. Well, what Toronto, Montreal is doing defensively right now is they're playing a lot of zone defense, and we see Peyton not being able to get any pressure on Flutie. They're playing a lot of man defense, and they need to go back to zone, because in the zone, that's where you're covering areas, and that's what Doug Flutie is picking apart right now, areas. We see the matchup of Peyton and Stevenson. These two have faced each other on many occasions. Stevenson started off in Saskatchewan. Peyton started in Winnipeg. Short yardage offense in for the Argos on second and one. Flutie passed in this situation earlier. This time, hands the ball off. And lunging for the first down is Big Robert Drummond. Is that a lunge or is that a hurdle? He went back to his track days on that one. He hurdled right over the top of that Montreal defensive front. Looked a little like Bob Beeman. Mexico City. We're not at altitude today, but he got altitude on that on that leap over the top. Great effort by Robert Drummond. That shows you how important this game is that you sell out like that on short yard education. Our goes back on the Montreal side of half at the 53. All the receivers are out. And Flutie looks downfield. There's Drummond, and he climbed the ladder to pull that down. Terrific catch by Drummond in front of Douglas Kraft, the pickup of 19. And Doug Flutie is being a surgeon right now, working against this Montreal defense. They're playing back on their heels. He's taking the aggression away from them. But Robert Drummond, they lined him out at wide receiver. The big catch down the sideline. Well, the Argos looked like such a force two weeks ago. Closing out the season in Hamilton, and Drummond declared Toronto playoff ready. They certainly look it so far this afternoon. First down, direct snap to Drummond. He'll try the left side. And Robert Drummond crashing down to the 26-yard line. Again, the quarterback... Douglas Kraft there to force him out. And he's banged up a bit on the play. I think he might have hurt his shoulder when he hit Robert Drummond on that play. And Drummond is a horse. It looks like he's limping now. But the direct snap, we saw that with Mike Clemens, and he pitched it back to Flutie earlier. But this time, Drummond takes it on his own. And you see Douglas Kraft as he goes down, and he gets up limping. 
Doug Flutie was saying as this offense has evolved for the Argos, they now can run out of all their shotgun formations. And again, it's Drummond with the football. And he'll be close to a first down. It was second and two, and Drummond should have enough to move the sticks. Doug Peterson, who's had an outstanding year, defensive tackle for Montreal with the tackle. Well, imagination and great athletes are the key to the Toronto offense. Is because all of the players in the backfield, Clemens, Drummond, and Flutie, are accustomed to handling the football, catching it on the fly. And when you can direct snap it, defenses really never get a chance to gauge you. So the Argos knocking on the door again. The ball on the 23. Flutie using the blocking of Vic Stevenson. Now downfield in the end zone. Touchdown, Jimmy Cunningham. for Cunningham during the regular season, but a big one here in the Eastern Final. And Chris, I'll take you back to the opening game of the CFL season, Toronto versus Montreal. 22 seconds to go in the football game when Doug Flutie was able to break contain and find Paul Mazzotti floating loose in the back of the end zone. Once again, not the similar scenario, but this time, Jimmy Cunningham for six. Vanderjack adds the extra point. Nice job by the 15-year veteran, Vic Stevenson, providing the block for Flutie to find Cunningham in the end zone. Solid drive for the Argo touchdown, capped by Jimmy Cunningham, a 23-yard reception. The mobility of Doug Flutie, and I spoke about earlier, Doug Flutie has the ability to extend plays for five seconds. And when you can extend a play that long, it makes it puts a lot of pressure on the defensive secondary. And with these fleet-footed receivers for Toronto, they'll always find an open spot. Andrew Jack driving it deep. And here's Fight. And Fight hauled down as he crossed the 20. Good downfield coverage, Lester Smith. And now the tipper's getting short. The Alouettes traveled to Toronto by train, and uh, it has been derailed here in this first half for Montreal. Well, I don't know if it's been derailed. It looks like they've been run over by train in the first half thus far because everything has been clicking for Toronto. Grant Carter showing some frustration after that last pass by Doug Sudi, taking a shot on the Toronto quarterback after he released it, but too little, too late. Last Eastern final in Toronto was 91. It was Winnipeg. Chris Walby and company. And a lot of people thought they matched up well against the Argos. That turned out to be a 42-3 decision. Tracy Hands got to get the momentum shifted in a hurry. Or we'll have another game like that. Looking for Armstrong in the flat and over his head into the Argonaut bench. You know, the number one hindrance right now with this Montreal offense is that over the season it was basically a two-receiver offense. Climbing and Armstrong. And so you, your wideouts really didn't get incorporated into the passing scheme. And so Toronto are going to double up Climbing and Armstrong and zone out on the wideouts. Well, we know how elusive Tracy Ham can be. And you wonder if he may not have to take off soon to put a little added dimension into this Alouette offense. Well, you, you get a look at the offensive brain thrust, Peter Voss of the Alouettes, and Tracy Ham on that last play, pass play had the happy feet. He never got set in the pocket. He has to be more decisive. If he's going to throw the ball, stay there. If he's going to run, take off early. Well, Gene Gaines, the Hall of Famer on the left. Good veteran staff in Montreal. We'll see if they can make the right adjustments. Ed Berry is a Argonaut down on the field right now. And Ed has had a nice year coming back this season with Toronto. Played last year in Memphis and one of those players that Matthews brought back in. A former Argonaut from some years ago. And he was part of a trade years ago that Don Wilson was also involved in. And they're both back here. Tracy Ham was involved in that trade. Eight players in 1993 sent to Edmonton for Tracy Ham and a couple other ball players. And he's still one of the better defensive backs in the CFL. We're four minutes in to this second quarter. It's 19-0 Toronto, and Tracy Ham facing second and ten. 
big rush, Andrew Stewart bursting through, and Ham will take off with it, the Tracy Ham took a hit and has the first down, fumbled the ball, and the Argos say it went off them and out. Tracy Ham actually lost the ball off of his right thigh. Tracy Ham has the tendency to run with the ball in one hand. As he was trying to dive for the first down, he lost the ball, but fortunately enough, he was able to knock it out. Andrew Stewart with great pressure initially, but Ham, great feet, getting outside, but watch as he loses the ball as he tries to dive for the first down. And it might have gone off a of Givens' foot, could be an Argonaut ball. We'll get a great look on this slow-mo replay here. Whoops. See where the ball hits. Now I got Helm on the help. Boy, another turnover by the Alouettes here would almost be fatal. Well, you know, one of the things you wouldn't expect Tracy Ham to be unnerved right now, and it seems like he doesn't have a full grasp of the football game, not just the football, but Andrew Stewart is down, who's had a good first half for the Argonauts at defensive tackle. Last year played with Dave Ritchie, the defensive coordinator for Montreal in BC, and was a great acquisition to help shore up that defensive line with Rob Walter. So Stewart in some difficulty as he makes his way to the sidelines, and Noah Cantor likely to check in along the line. Well, we're going to get your friend Rob Walter to come back in the game. North Cannon is in also in Walter, and Oscar Giles, who had missed some games in the middle of the season, back at defensive end. Well, there's Rob Waldrop. No need for the toque today. He's got a turtleneck on, though. What an outstanding season, though, he has had. Long sleeves. Is it cold down there? <laughs> Outland Trophy winner and an Eastern All-Star. First and ten. After the ham carry. And now out of the backfield, it's Pringle. And he had a good burst of speed down the left side for another first down. When I asked about Pringle's ability to catch the ball out of the backfield because of the brace, the Alouettes were saying, don't expect a whole lot because the arms will not be extended that much, limited by the brace. But we have seen the Alouettes go a lot to that already in this game. Well, the key to that is Mike Pringle catching the ball with his hands, not letting it get to his body because he doesn't have the deflection in his elbow. So if he can get his hands on the football, he can bring it in and he gets ahead of steam. He's a loader. Tracy Ham, three for seven in the game and all have gone to Mike Pringle. Here's Ham on a roll and a catch for Jock Climbing. On the Argo side of half at the 52. Jock Climey, who had an outstanding year, 68 catches, 1,209 yards to lead the Alouettes, nine touchdowns. Well, he labored for the prior two seasons here in Toronto, where he had 1,225 yards combined over those two years, but he has really found himself. He had a hamstring problem in Toronto, never got healthy, but he's healthy once again in Montreal. Alouettes starting to move the football for the first time. Make to Pringle, Ham in trouble, and down he goes. Demetrius Maxey, the former Alouette, has the sack. I tell you, that is a huge play, Chris, defensively for Toronto because Demetrius Maxey was one of the players that Montreal thought that they would be able to get around on the corner. Played the first nine games of the season in Montreal, was picked up late by Toronto here, but great athletic ability. He was a natural defensive end in college, played defensive tackle in Baltimore last year, but really showed some ability to stop Ham on the play. So now second and 18. Ham looked one way and goes to Pringle on the other side of the field and a swarming Argonaut defense limits Pringle's gain to maybe a couple. Johnny Harris, Ken Benson in on the stop while Andrew Stewart gets attention Looks like he has a hamstring problem. They're getting that ice pack up under the bottom of his leg. And so he may not be back in the way that this defense is playing. There's no fall off, but you can bring Rob Waldrop, an Eastern All-Star, off the bench as a backup. You have an outstanding defensive core. Baker back in to punt to Jimmy Cunningham. Great punt by Baker. And this one goes out of bounds at the six-yard line. So Terry Baker with a booming 51-yard punt. All off the top of the show, you talked about the importance of 
the offensive line of the Argonauts. That's their coach, Charlie Carpenter. And so far, they're grading out very well against this Alouette defense. So he has to be very pleased with what his big horses have done up front. They've really run down the field on this uh, Montreal defense, led by Mike Kislak, their Eastern nominee for outstanding linemen. But Pierre Bercheval missed 16 games of the regular season with a broken tackle. We get a look at Mike Kislak right there. Outstanding offensive lineman from the East, but Pierre Versal missed the first 16 games. They had basically written off his season, but the determination to get back in the lineup and become a part of this great offensive line here in Toronto, and he has played the last two started the final game of the season in Hamilton. Bercheval getting a chance because of the Don Matthews philosophy that you don't lose a starting job because of an injury. And when Bercheval proved he could return to the lineup without missing a beat in Hamilton. He got the nod for the playoffs. First down Argonauts, Flutie over the middle, and he has Tyrone Williams. Williams, the University of Western Ontario graduate with his first catch of the afternoon. And you talk about not missing a beat when he went back in the lineup in Hamilton. Three of the touchdowns that Robert Drummond scored in that game were right behind Pierre Vercheval. Williams bothered by neck and shoulder problems in the second half of the year, and uh, he was happy to get the two-week break before this Eastern final as the Argonauts healed up. Here's Flutie, finds Masati, and Paul Masati has another first down up at the 50-yard line. Irv Smith matched up against Mazzotti, and a lot of people didn't feel Mazzotti could uh, beat Smith in that matchup today. Well, I don't know if you could say Mazzotti can't beat anyone. Mazzotti has had three consecutive years of over a 1,000 yards in receiving, but what Toronto does so well is that they have a trip formation, and you take two players and you run them off. That time it was Drummond and Williams. Mazzotti comes back underneath, and he has a wide open lane to catch the ball and run it. Third straight 1,000-yard season for 88 of the Argonauts. First and ten. Rudy steps up. Wide open is Robert Drummond. And he makes a terrific catch. Drummond thought he was out of bounds and stopped up. Might have been able to pick up some more yardage there. 30, though, on the carry. And again, Doug Flutie said if Robert Drummond is making big plays today, we're in good shape. And that is the second time that we've seen Robert Drummond go vertical. On a short yardage play when he hurdled the line, that time looked like a basketball player going up for a rebound because he skied and went up and made this reception on the sideline. First down, Toronto, after a gain of 30. Doug Flutie, 17 of 21, 223 yards, and add another one as he goes back to Mazzotti, who puts the ball on the carpet, and I think the Alouettes have the ball. So the Argos, for the second time in this first half, have turned it over on the Alouettes' side of half. And once again, Toronto lays the ball on the ground. Montreal dodges another bullet. A great defensive hit coming up on Paul Mazzotti. Forced the fumble, and Montreal will have the ball first and ten when we return. Eight-year veteran Paul Randolph, leader of that Alouette defense, helped jar the ball loose. And Bob Price talked about when they lost O.J. Brigance that they needed a player of the similar type ability. And Paul Randolph was a free agent, and he was that type of linebacker that can play rush or in the middle that they needed. And you saw his ability covering back, getting the drop, coming up, making the hit, causing the fumble. That's twice now that the Argonauts threatening the score have put the ball back in Montreal's hands, and that could come back to cost. Although Toronto, at the moment, with a 19-point lead. Pringle on the ground, and they stretch it out. And this Argo defense has done a sturdy job against the run in this first half. And Oscar Giles has been a force. You saw Andrew Stewart being carted off. So you talk about a gap cancellation defense, and that is what Don Matthews runs here in Toronto. And you get a great example. Watch how the defensive linemen slant down into the gap, not allowing the defensive linemen to get offensive linemen to get a clear shot on them, and there's no room for the running back. Second and 11, Ham with time, Jock Climby, and he's hauled down by Ken Benson, short of the first down. Sure, 
tackle by Benson. Ken Benson, a very interesting story. Played the opening game of the season in Montreal, and he was released, picked back up by Don Matthews, who he had played for in Baltimore last season, but played here in Toronto in 1993 and led the CFL in tackles. The Alouette said that the Argo defense was a lot like Edmonton. They force you into areas, and it's tough to move against, and that's been the case in this first half. Baker, a big punt and out of bounds, so won't get a chance to return the football. 5.19 to go, first half here at Skydome. Hate the cold weather? That's why you'll love starting your car with the remote car starter. This week it's just $99.99, only at Canadian Tire. That putt not as productive as I thought. It was out of bounds and marked as just a 35-yarder. So the Argonauts again enjoying great field position at the 46-yard line of Toronto. And Doug Flutie off to a torrid start here. The same building where he won his only Grey Cup in 1992. Flutie under pressure, and he's brought down. There's Leonard Renfro, the newcomer to this lineup. He played on the 1991 NCAA champion Colorado Buffaloes. They picked him up. He's been doing nothing here during the offseason. He was a number one draft pick two years ago of the Philadelphia Eagles. Gets that big push up the middle. It goes about 300 pounds. They felt that he would be able to come in and compliment Doug Peterson very well at the defensive tackle position for this game. So Flutie dropped behind the line of scrimmage at second and 14. Three receivers either side of the formation. And Flutie steps up. He'll take off with the ball, and Flutie grabbed by Tracy Gravely at the 49, well short of the first down. I'll tell you, one of the things Montreal still cannot do at this point in the game is gamble defensively. Doug Peterson made a big loop out of his lane trying to come behind Renfro, and that opened it up for Doug Flutie. He was very fortunate that it was second and about 18. 4.06 to play in the first half. Mike Vanderjet back in. Lewis Fight is deep. The lone man for Montreal. And Fight at his 26. Up across the 30. And the Alouettes have to get something going offensively. As this first half draws to a close, Tracy Ham in a 19-point hole. Well, when you look at their play-calling sequence, it's been kind of confusing because they've been passing on first down and running on second down. Michael O'Shea is the run-stopper who is in the game in the middle for Toronto this afternoon, so what they need to do is change that up, run more on first, and be more inclined to pass on second. Argonauts during the regular season, fifth in the league against the run. Going back to the air. Over the middle, there's Chris Armstrong with a catch at the 50. Nail ball loose. And this time, I think the Argos are on it. That's the last thing the Alouettes needed. They give it right back to Toronto. And Johnny Harris has the pigskin. That's something that Montreal could not afford. Johnny Harris played the last two games of the season last year in San Antonio, but Chris Armstrong has been Tracy Ham's go-to man for the last three years. He has led his team in total receptions, but that time with the great hit by Harris coming in closing, he drops that shoulder right on the football, and Chris Armstrong just doesn't wrap up the football. Armstrong, the key receiver last week against right. Hamilton. Six catches, 87 yards. Bob Price has seen a lot of mistakes in this first half. Here's Mike Clements trying to spin away from Ken Watson, who's holding on. And the forward progress for Clements will be the 45. That's a gain of six. And again, tempers flaring. 
frustration on Montreal's behalf, but Toronto has nothing to be concerned about at this point. They have been dominating the football game. Now the turnover battle is starting to balance out since Montreal has put it on the ground, and, and this high-powered offense of Toronto has been very potent today. All right. Here's Johnny Harris, who made the big hit and came up with the football for the Argos. Well, the Edmonton Eskimos are arriving. There's Darren Flutie, Danny McManus in behind, hoping they can write a similar script to two years ago when they were BC Lions. Well, they're in familiar surroundings. The snow is on the ground, it's cold, and we're up in the box. And we'll have a preview of the second game of our doubleheader, the Western Final from McMahon Stadium, coming up at halftime. As well, we'll dissect this first half that has been dominated by the Argonauts since the opening kickoff return for a touchdown by Mike Clements. First down, second down, Toronto, and Rudy on a roll finds Clements for a first down. Called out of bounds by Ken Watson, and seems like those two have something going in a matchup. Well, it's very frustrating when you're trying to cover Mike Clements. And what Montreal does is they bring in two offensive linemen in short yardage situations to play defense. So what happens is that you're undermanned defensively basically for Montreal. And when you can get Clemens or Cunningham or Drummond out one-on-one, -on -one, you better not miss a tackle. Last year, so impressive against Pitts and now matched up against the much smaller but quicker Clements and now Jimmy Cunningham another diminutive front and he runs past Kraft stopped at the 27 another first down you talk about that matchup last year with Pitts in the Grey Cup with Watson those are two players that physically were quite similar so it was very easy to cover Alan Pitts but when you have a 5'6 five, 5'7 five, Jimmy Cunningham and Mike Clements both of these players play close to the ground so once they're in that squat they're only around 4'8 4-9. And so it's very difficult for a 6-3 defensive back to play at that level. 4-8 or 4-9 and their 40s are about 4-3, four, 4-4. Three, four, four. You ran that, didn't you? <laughs> out of the backfield, there goes the Fleet Cunningham again and taken out of bounds at the 21. 5-4 for the Jet. Charlie Gordon coming up with the force out, but what they're doing is they're very confused right now, and Toronto is running a lot of picks in their passing scheme. As you see Pinball coming up, getting the pick on Irv Smith, allowing Cunningham to get outside, but nice block by uh, uh, Pinball on the play, and that's what you have to do. You have to play all phases. You have to hustle. Well, Adam Rita has to be pleased. Oh, he's very calm. Look at him. Pass him another cup of coffee. Just doesn't want to see another turnover down deep. Direct snap, Drummond, who had to pick it off the carpet and picks his way for a first down to the 10. Grant Carter finally brought him down. I tell you right now, this defensive front for Montreal is getting no penetration up front. So the offensive line for Toronto is just dominating the line of scrimmage. And that's where the game is won in the trenches. Because when that ball was on the ground, you should have had someone in the backfield with some penetration. But without penetration, it allowed Drummond to pick it up, gather himself, and get inside the 10. The Alouettes said that offensive line was overrated. And they were going to expose it today. Hasn't been the case. Flutie, Cunningham. Flag down, Cunningham forced out at the two. I really don't know if you can overrate an offensive line that has only allowed 18 quarterback sacks on the season, even with Doug Flutie in the backfield. He is going to allow some extra time to throw the football, but those guys up front have to keep the defensive lineman at bay. I think Alfred Payton was offside, and the options being explained to Doug Flutie. And that's his second one of the game, and this one I think they may accept and move it down and save a down on the play. Well, it'll be first and five. Offside. Montreal 57. Penalties declined. Second down. Be first and five from the five, but instead they'll take second down from about the one yard line, the one and a half. Well, Alfred Payton is trying to get the jump on Flutie because he knows he has a minimal amount of time to get there with Doug in the pocket. the Argos trying to push it in again and take a 26 point lead to the locker room Flutie keeps and 
Flutie scores. Touchdown, Toronto. Well, that so-called overrated offensive line once again has just dominated the line of scrimmage. They came off the ball, drove all those white jerseys back into the end zone, and Doug Flutie fell in for one more Toronto touchdown. With 62 seconds to go in this first half, it has been all Toronto. Vander Chad adds the extra point. And when you broke this one down, all the matchups, the last score you'd expect at the half is either one of these teams up by 26. But Doug Flutie, I think proving a point today to 23 of 27, 268 yards, a touchdown pass, and now a touchdown on the ground. Well, Doug Flutie is letting it be known he is up for his fifth MVP award on the season, and he has really come out here in the first half and put his stamp on that. He had 11 games this season where he had passed for well over 300 yards, and in three of those games, he went over the 400-yard mark. Doug Flutie has taken complete control of his offense. His offensive line has taken it personal this afternoon, saying that they were overrated, and they helped their quarterback up with a little celebration from his center, Kislak. Flutie overshadowed in the Grey Cup game last year by Tracy Ham. And I think that added a little purpose to his preparation this week. Well, I think preparation is just a big part of Doug's game every week. He wants to win. He's such a competitor. Lewis Fight for the Alouettes. And again, terrific special teams for the Argos in this first half. Just a 12-yard return, and the guy from North Bay is having himself a afternoon. Mike O'Shea with another tackle. And the temple of this game was originally set by Toronto special teams. Mike Clemens takes back the opening kickoff for six. And they have not allowed Lewis Fight to pick up any good yardage on kick returns today. Last week, he averaged 14.3 on punt returns, but he's been corralled all afternoon today. You see Daryl Adrellin right here, the architect of Toronto special teams. He and Don Matthews have been together for the past five years in Saskatchewan, Baltimore, and now here in Toronto. 55 seconds to go, first half. Early movement by the Argos. The give to Pringle, and he is buried by O'Shea. Again, a flag down. And it looked like Rob Waldrop was offside on the play. And that's a matchup you talked about in the opening, Chris, with Pringle and O'Shea. You get a great look at Mike O'Shea, the eyes of a linebacker. What you want to do is get that hand extension. Still first out. And when you can get that hand extension on an offensive lineman, it makes it much easier to scrape and make the stop. So first and five for the Alouettes. At their own 29. Desperately in need of points. And flushed out of the pocket. Downfield finds a receiver. That's Chris Armstrong with the catch at the 46. But Chris, it goes back to the point I spoke about, climbing and Armstrong. That's basically all that Ham is looking for because when you look at Williams and Montana, they're running around like they're not even in the passing scheme. Couple of youngsters at the wide open position. Dennis Montana had a touchdown catch last week, but just two catches during the regular season. Williams on the other side with 33, but we haven't heard from them yet. First down, Ham scrambling and now delivering and behind the intended receiver. That's Michael Souls, and we haven't called his number, the outstanding Canadian nominee from the East. Souls. Had it go by him incomplete. And he had an outstanding year. He had 42 receptions coming into this game during the regular season. But Tracy Ham has just not got his feet set this afternoon. And, and that right there is a, a very close call on being a roughing of the passer. But Tracy Ham has to be more decisive in his throw. 26 seconds to go in the first half. Second and 10. Here comes that rush again. Ham overthrowing. Jock Climby incomplete. 
And Tracy Ham is complaining that Reggie Givens grabbed his face mask as he went by. He didn't get any sympathy from the officials. He's had a very tough first half. We'll get a look right here. Watch Givens' right hand as he goes by Tracy Ham, and he gets some of that face mask, and he had a valid complaint to cry to the officials about. You see him coming up inside, getting the hand. It wasn't much, but anytime you get up in that cage area, there's supposed to be a flag on the play. Cunningham back with 18 seconds to go. And still time for the Argos maybe to get more on the board if they can get a good return. And Cunningham stopped at the 36-yard line. 38-yard punt, 9-yard return. Tracy Ham. 8 for 14 in the first half, 74 yards. So he has been clearly overshadowed by Doug Flutie in the opening 30 minutes. Do you just put a knee down here or do you go for a little bit more? How greedy do you want to be? You know how I am. I like to roll the dice. But this is a situation that they may roll the dice, but I think Doug will go down and uh, just reserve and make sure they go into the locker room and sort out things and see how they can come out and put more points on the scoreboard in the second half. Flutie on his way to his best playoff performance ever. And he's going to put the knee down. Has missed on just four of 27 first half throws. And it's just been a dominating performance by this Toronto offense. The offensive line has done all that you can expect from them. And Doug Flutie has delivered the ball to his receivers. Big crowd at Sky Dome, and they're on their feet for Flutie, Matthews, and the Argonauts. A 26 0 lead at the intermission here in Toronto in the Eastern Final. Now let's head west to Snowy McMahon Stadium and join Scott Oak. Chris, thank you. And so with the Argos leading, uh, we welcome back our game day analyst, Chris Walby, who, by the way, is innocent of all charges stemming from the Bombers' 68-7 loss in Edmonton last week. A torn knee <laughs> is his alibi. Uh, Chris, when uh, Pinball ran back the opening kickoff, did you think then you'd find out what the Alouettes were made of? Well, I think the biggest thing you got to talk about, Scott, is when that happens, it tests the team's metal. We find out what they're made of. Montreal is a notoriously slow starter, but I think that always takes a little bit of the wind out of your sails. And as you can see right now, they have not recovered at all, and Tracy is really forcing a lot of things right now. You thought that Carter and Payton would get to Doug Flutie. They've been able to get to him, but they haven't hurt the Argos. Well, they've gotten to him, but Doug Flutie's doing a shotgun, and what's happening is he's taking away the effectiveness of that rush, and he's dumping all the passes just over the line of scrimmage short, and, uh, I mean, the DBs are playing soft, and it's it's just walking down the field. You say the Alouette's notoriously slow starters. you got to think they've started too slow today. Well, 26 points down is going to be one heck of a... It'll be a miracle comeback, but you never know because they are, as I said, slow starters, so let's not give up. Keep your feet up on the couch and second and half watch right. right. Argos lead at the half in Toronto. We'll return to Calgary in just a moment. Welcome back to Toronto. A gorgeous November day. Boy, if we can get this weather next week for the Grey Cup and Argo fans hoping for the same type of result next week. Tracy Ham has 30 minutes to try and change the course of this week. Was the weather on your Christmas list? That's all we need to know. See? <laughs> Much better this this week here than it was in Edmonton uh, last week. And uh, what the forecast reads for Calgary later this afternoon. Second half underway. The largest crowd undoubtedly here at Sky Dome this year to watch the Argos enjoying this one. Well, can they... Alouettes changed the momentum. I guess, does the game plan just go out the window? And uh, this is a team that's been known for its second-half adjustments, and the Alouettes really have a chore ahead of them now. Well, they would have to make some huge adjustments. They really haven't tried to establish the run in the first half, but what they need to do is to be able to incorporate their four different receivers. Montana and Williams need to get involved in the passing scheme because when you look at those two receivers coming off the ball as a defensive back, you don't even expect them to be in the pass pattern. Michael Schaefer, a guy who didn't want to re-sign with Hamilton, he's playing like a guy who wants to be in Hamilton next week. Here's Pringle. They go right to the crowd, and look who's there. Michael O'Shea and Reggie Gibbons there to shut it down. And when you're trying to run the counter play, when you're behind by 26, it takes too long for that play to develop. Michael O'Shea does a marvelous job of reading, but Reggie Given comes across and disrupts the flow. He knocks off Neil Fort, and he doesn't have that head of steam, and it's easy for Michael O'Shea to make the tackle. 
Loss of three on the play, second and 13. At the Montreal 29. And over the middle, and he overthrows Jock Climbing, the intended receiver. So more of the same for Montreal to start this second half, and Tracy Ham looks like he hurt his hand. He actually did, Chris. On that follow-through, he jammed it on top of the helmet of one of Toronto's defensive linemen, and this is where the game is being won. In the trenches, they've been getting that push. You see the hand come through. It actually hits Bruce Beaton on the face mask, but the surge by Rob Waldrop to push the offensive lineman back in Tracy Ham's face caused that injury. Terry Baker angling this one out of bounds. They don't want to put it in Cunningham's hands. And it's marked out at the 48. And the numbers tell the story of this one. The five first downs, Chris. And that's by a team that's a predominantly running offense. And when you cannot establish the running game and you can't pick up those first downs, you're going to spend a lot of time on the field defensively. The Alouettes averaged over 150 yards rushing per game this year. So... 34 in the first half. And you think about Tyrone Rush, who was taken out of the lineup for this game. 148 yards on the ground last week versus Hamilton, and he carried the ball 34 times. Doug Flutie goes back to work. Rush on. That's Doug Peterson with a flag down. And Flutie going to the wide side of the field. Knocked down incomplete. And likely a holding penalty against Toronto. Chris Perez is going to be the culprit on this play. He was working against Grant Carter. Grant Carter led the CFL in quarterback sacks this season with 15. Illegal block to the head. Toronto 62. First down repeated. Actually got an illegal block to the head, and what that is is extending those hands up into the face mask of a defensive lineman. You get a great shot of it right here as Chris Perez is holding on to the face mask of Grant Carter, and the official threw the flag on the plate. You see, you see the matchup there, Chris Perez, a monster of a man. They have him listed at 290. He goes about 3'5", 3'10", but a tremendously conditioned offensive tackle. First and 20, and here is Cunningham across the 45 and getting back close to the original line of scrimmage. You know, you look at these scat receivers for Toronto, it's just so difficult to get a handle on them. Montreal has a very physical defensive secondary, but when you can't line them up, you really don't stand a chance. Argonauts with five of the top 19 receivers in the CFL during the year as Flutie was outstanding in distributing the football. And now here's Drummond trying to get outside. Stopped up at the 50, but a little extra effort got near midfield. Still, he'll be three or four short of the first down. You know, he's just running through arm tackles, Chris. You got to break down and wrap up on the big guy. Montreal came into this game. Three of their tacklers ranked in the top six in the CFL this season. But the way Robert Drummond and Mike Clemens have been running through them, that's a stat that really doesn't mean much right now. Those three linebackers, Grappley, Bryant, and Randolph. Grabley leading the league in tackles. And Lewis Fight lined up too deep on his last punt return, and he cost Montreal two, two points on his safety. Vanderdad kicking it again. Fight has to come up for it, drops it, and the Argos have it again. There is a flag down, and are they going to get Toronto for no yards? But once again, Chris, he had lined up too deep. He had to run about 15 yards trying to catch up with that football, and he just couldn't get underneath it and he may have turned it over on the ground. We'll sort out the penalty. It was a 34-yard punt by Vanderjet. We'll be back after this. First down. While the mistakes continue to happen for the Alouettes, this time a no-yards penalty. Adrian Smith within that five-yard range. Well, and Montreal really dodged the bullet on that because Lewis Fight once again, misgaged the football. Fike just spent some time fielding footballs on the sidelines, getting set for the next time he has to go in. Tracy Ham in trouble. Tried to drop it off to Jock Climby as he was falling to the turf. Incomplete, and that was Oscar Giles pulling Ham 
to the turf. You know, the one thing we haven't seen from Tracy this afternoon is the willingness to run with the football. Last week, he pulled it down and ran for 56 yards, which was very critical in the game versus Hamilton. And that's what Tracy Ham does as well as any quarterback in the CFL is run. But when you don't present that threat to the defense, they can tee off and come at you. Oscar Giles has had a big afternoon. He has been hurt for a great deal the second half of the year. Ham now, second and ten. Got to him that time. The man with the two. Whatever works, he's hot today. And that goes back to my point about Tracy's unwillingness to run the football. He wants to sit back in the pocket. Waldrop and Easton all saw this season with a swim move coming right up inside, tracking down Ham for the sack. And that's where the game has been dominated by Toronto on both sides of the football, in the trenches. Their offensive line has dominated, and their defensive line with a 26-point lead has just pit back their ears. A punt going out of bounds again, and they are sacrificing yards in the fans on Terry Baker for electing not to punt to Jimmy Cunningham. That's a 32-yard punt. To I really don't know if they're sacrificing yards, but what they're doing is saving themselves from a great return. Jimmy Cunningham is such a threat, but that lets you know how a game is played as a chess match because a punt returner can decide what a punter is going to do. Still to come this afternoon from McMahon Stadium in Calgary, the Stampeders and the Eskimos, the Western Final. That's been an annual date for the past several years. Don Whitman, David Archer, Scott Oak, Chris Walby are on hand, bundled up at McMahon. Doug Flutie back to work, and that pass skips to Clements on a bounce, incomplete. You know, when you, you look at the comfort level of Doug Flutie in the pocket versus Tracy Ham this afternoon, he really has not felt the pressure. So it has allowed him to sit in the pocket, and even when he wanted to, 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 to scramble, he was decisive about it and took off. Montreal, no sacks during the regular season against Doug Flutie. This offensive line has been stingy again this afternoon. Second and ten. Flutie over the middle, and Dwayne Demetrician has the catch. Or check that Drummond, 29. Robert Drummond with another catch, and he's had a terrific game out of the backfield. That's 22 yards. And what, once again, offensive of line, it's given the time because it gives Drummond the time to run a circle route. He's lined up on the wing and he's circling down the middle of the field, uncovered. Montreal is sitting back in a zone defense now and trying to chase him with a linebacker. You think Drummond's enjoying this? I think he's having a field day. You, you go back to 1994 when he had that outstanding game in Baltimore versus Toronto then, and now he's having another outstanding playoff game here versus Montreal. He lines up as the wide out over the middle. That's Mazzotti catching the football, breaking a tackle. Paul Mazzotti! Driven out of bounds at the 13-yard line. 26 yards for Mazzotti as the Argos continue to roll. The only worry on this play for Toronto was whether the official was going to knock down the ball from Paul Mazzotti. He was the only person who had a chance on the play, and he got out just in the nick of time. But Paul Mazzotti did a marvelous job of reading the zone, finding that soft spot, picking up another Toronto first down. Aren't many left from the 91 Grey Cup. Paul Mazzotti's one of them for the Argonauts. And Chris Perez is just manhandling Grant Carter. I mean, he's treating him like a rag doll out there today. There goes for the first down at the Montreal 12, looking for more. They think to Drummond, Flutie to Clements, and the pass delivered high and incomplete. Charles Gordon in coverage against Pinball. And Montreal really has to protect against Toronto being able to get into the end zone on this drive. They haven't had any offensive productivity this afternoon, so if they can hold them out, it'd be a great moral victory, but if they don't, this could be over with. Doug Flutie has answered the critics again this afternoon. It's the only knock against Flutie that has continued throughout his CFL career is about playoff performances. Boy, he's been vintage Flutie today. Calls his own number. He'll score. Touchdown, Doug Flutie. You know, after 
after this game, Chris, Doug Flute is going to get a lot of accolades in the paper and in the media. But his offensive line today has just one, done one masterful job. Charlie Carpenter's bunch has done it all. Vic Stevenson pulled from his right tackle on this play, led the, led the interference for Flutie around the left side as he galloped into the end zone untouched. Vic Stevenson has great cup rings from the 89 Saskatchewan Rough Riders, the 94 BC Lions. He's looking for a third, and the Toronto Argonauts are halfway down the Queen Elizabeth Way to the 96 Grey Cup. James Dutton Flutie just echoed your comments. He went over to Charlie Carpenter, the offensive line coach, and congratulated him because uh, the O-line's making his job easy today. They're making Charlie Carpenter look like a genius. Watch Vic Stevens. You see him right there in the hole. Now, he's pulled from his right offensive tackle position all the way around to lead Doug Flutie into the end zone. The rest of the offensive linemen came off the ball, sealed off the Montreal defense, and Doug Flutie had no problem waltzing in for six. Flutie has a couple of touchdowns today. Cunningham, Clements, the others, 33 to nothing. Nobody breaking down this game expected this type of score. Well, Chris, the last time the Argos were in the East Final, it was 1991. The game looking much like this one as Toronto beat Winnipeg 42-3. And in the patience is a virtue category. Look at this. Only five players from that team that went on to win the 1991 Grey Cup are still on this football team, and they are all making strong contributions here this afternoon. Mike Clemens with that big 90-yard run back of the opening kick. Don Wilson on defense. And I know it's early for a decision desk already prediction, but it looks like the Argos are going back. Here's Ham over the middle looking for Michael Souls. Incomplete. Flag is down. Mike Clemens was saying this not only is the biggest game he's played in five years, it might be the biggest game ever because of the tough times he's experienced in the last five years. Holding, Montreal 60, declined, second down. Well, you talk about the lean times that have been here in Toronto for the last five years, but also with him being shunned about the all-star selection. Mike Clemens, it, it couldn't have happened to a more deserved player to be on that team. I mean, the guys who are voting, I didn't get a vote, but you guys made a big mistake this year. Holding call declined on Mike Sutherland. Ham on a roll and incomplete. As he was looking for a receiver in front of the Argonaut bench. Nigel Williams, and that's the first time Ham has looked to one of his wideouts this afternoon. Yeah, but when you go three quarters, Chris, and you haven't looked at one of those guys, they're not into the game mentally. They haven't run a crisp pass route all afternoon, and when you decide to go to them, it's almost like a shock when the ball is in the air. I think the Alouettes have been shocked from the get-go this afternoon. They haven't recovered from the Clemens kickoff return yet. And Baker again trying to angle it out and hearing the wrath of the Argo fans. Well, in his angling the ball out of bounds, he needs to at least just concentrate on crushing one. That's only 30 yards on that one. At least try to kick it to the other side of the field. Maybe he'll get more yards out of it. We're halfway through the third quarter. Well, Mike Clements, we talked about 1991. Five years ago, over 40,000 at Skydome. It was expected to be a tight matchup. The Blue Bombers and the Argonauts. But Clements and the Argos had a field day that day. And went on to a 42-3 rump. That was almost as nice as the kickoff return this afternoon. And he got a great block by Paul Mazzotti on that play. There's big Robert Drummond. And Drummond barrels his way over midfield. Finally stopped at the Montreal 52, and that's close to eight. You know, I've talked a lot about the offensive line in this game, but right now it's becoming fun for him because Toronto now can work on establishing their run game, getting ready for playing outside next week in Hamilton, and Robert Drummond is going to love carrying the football, and the big guys love coming off the football. Good thing, everybody. Hey, see that in Hamilton? Hey, they know, yeah, we're going to steal this, and we can get your ticket for Hamilton, baby. It's all there, baby. Donald Smith already looking ahead to next week. Here's Flutie carrying the football. I don't know about that. He just was drilled by... Alfred Payton and Anthony Drawhorn. 
You want your quarterback, your franchise guy, carrying the football with a 33 nothing lead. You know, Doug's such an aggressive and competitive player. It's very hard for him to say, hey, I'm not going to stay 100% into the ball game. But what that does is let you know that Toronto is not going to pull back the horses in this type of situation. They're still working on keeping their game sharp and crisp. Flutie dropped for a three-yard loss by Alfred Payton, who finally got a clean shot. Nice to see the fans at Skydome this afternoon. They opened up the top level. Andrew Stewart, that's one of the few negatives today for the Argos. He's on crutches, a hamstring injury, we suspect. Third down, and Vanderjack. Lewis Fight. And Fight going the wrong way. 16, Adrian Smith there. 36-yard punt, minus three on the return. Hensley Charles, defensive back for the Montreal Alouettes. Football is such a game of aggression. Watch as he comes and peels back to get a block for Lewis fight. This is a game of violence. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what you call a deep leader. First thing hits the first thing that hits the ground is the name tag of the defender. A deep leader. Those two guys were teammates a couple of years ago. Namako and Charles. When Hensi Charles was in Argo, Mike Pringle. This is an enormous story today. Mike Pringle has been shut down. And you talk about the, the factor of Mike Pringle. 805 yards in eight games during the regular season. Missed last week's playoff game due to an elbow injury. But this is the hub of Montreal's offense, their running game. And it's been totally non-existent today. And I don't think it's the elbow slowing him down. Here's Pringle, and he couldn't bring it in with Adrian Smith. Waiting in the wings. And I go back to the point that I've made a couple times, Chris, is that Montreal is a two-receiver offense. Jock Climey and Chris Armstrong. Michael Soles had 46 catches on the regular season, but when your wideouts are a non-factor, it allows you to double up on the inside defensively. And that's what Toronto has done, and they've zoned the area where the two wideouts, Montana and Williams, are playing, and, Mont and Ham has had no escape routes. Baker... Gives Cunningham a chance. And on the weak side of the field, Cunningham comes up with eight yards on the return. A 38-yard punt. John Kalen amongst the tacklers for the Alouettes. So it was equal to his last punt when he punted out of bounds and got 30. He allowed the return and got 30. It all washes out even, I guess. Fans get a little more for their money, though, with Cunningham able to touch the football. Still to come, Edmondson, Calgary. And I don't expect that will be a 33-point game. Well, you've been one to straddle the fence post. Can I get a prediction <laughs> from you? Uh, that's tough. Uh, you know, I, I really thought these games, both of them would be decided by a field goal. And based on the fact I've been so wrong on this game, I'm, I'm going to stay on that fence. Here's Drummond wide open again. Robert Drummond is just taking apart this Alouette defense. 37 more for big number 29. Robert Drummond's final game of the season in Hamilton. He scored four touchdowns, and that's a perfect example of what Robert Drummond can do for your offense. Not only will he carry the mail out of the, the backfield, but he has 4-4 four, four speed in the 40. So he has the speed of a wide receiver once he gets an open field. And Irv Smith was the only thing between he and the goal line. Robert Drummond had 176 all-purpose yards last week against Hamilton. And he's chalked up even more against Bob Price's team. Those are just the receiving numbers. He has over 40 on the ground. Including behind Mazzotti, who couldn't bring it in with the one hand. Well, when you look at what Robert Drummond, Jimmy Cunningham, and Mike Clemens did at all-purpose yards through the season, all three ranked in the top five, that's a very explosive offense. They were a great compliment to Doug Flutie at quarterback. Well, this is a nightmare for Dave Ritchie, an outstanding defensive coordinator. 
94 Grey Cup champions, head coach of the BC Lions, and uh, he didn't foresee this. And Flutie's going to call timeout. Didn't like the alignment. Second and 10 with 3.33 to go in the third quarter. The threes are wild, 33-0 on the scoreboard. Well, this is a situation that Doug does not want to let a scoring opportunity get away. They've marched all the way down the field, and here's a chance for him to really drive the stake through Montreal's heart. He's had a marvelous afternoon. He has done all the right things. He's made the right adjustments. When he had to run, he would leave the pocket. When he did need to run, the offensive line gave him the time to find his open receivers down the field. Markel Fleetwood, the backup quarterback for the Argonauts. Charlie Carpenter. And Charlie Carpenter is the happiest man here in Sky Dome this afternoon. Offensive linemen really don't get a lot of credit for what occurs when you have a great offense, but they've just dominated the, the, the game today. And they never get credit from a guy like James Curry, who was a defensive lineman. Here's Cunningham, and he tripped up, and... Ken Watson got a hand on him. Cunningham stopped at the eight. So that really underscores how good the Argo offensive line has been today. Well, they, they have just had an outstanding afternoon. You know, because they never get consideration when you talk about players of the game and all of that. I mean, when you're giving out, this is one you might have to give as a group. Because the game has been won in the trenches. You've seen no pressure from Montreal's defensive front all afternoon on Doug Flutie that has been consistent in any way. Knowing those guys, they'll settle for a free dinner from Flutie after it's over. Well, it, Third and seven, and the fans here wanted the Argos to go for it, but Vanderjack will come in to attempt a field goal. From 15 yards out. And Vanderjack is good. Argos pouring it on here. Matthews team up 36 to nothing. With former Argo quarterback Conrad Holloway, who I'm sure watched in disbelief this year as Doug Flutie broke your all-time Argo single season passing record of 4,661 yards. What'd you think? I thought it was fantastic. I, I, I wasn't in disbelief. I mean, he's had a great season up here and he's had a great career up here so far. And a nicer guy couldn't have done it and I'm just happy for him and I got a chance to tell him today and I was really good. What can you say about Doug's performance here this afternoon? Well, <laughs> it's great to line him up five wide and just pitch and catch. And uh, Montreal's playing rather soft, and Doug's taking advantage of that. I understand you're now in the hockey business, uh, working PR for the Huntsville Channel Cats of the Central Hockey League. Oh, yeah, we're uh, my, my hockey expertise, you know, is so, <laughs> so great. But I, I had an opportunity to, to join up with a professional organization, and I'm very proud of it and having a good time doing it. All right, Conrad, it's good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Chris? Conrad Holloway, a star from another era with the Toronto Argonauts, a great cup title in the 80s. And when he threw the football, that was a marvelous offense that Toronto possessed in those days. They were the innovators of the run and shoot in the CFL back in 1982. Barnes and Holloway, and now Tracy Ham does make a connection with Chris Armstrong up at the 51-yard line, so Ham ends a streak of incompletions. Ken Benson stopping Armstrong from any further progress. You know, another long-standing Argonaut record fell this season also, and it was on the receiving side when Terry Greer's 113 reception record for the Argonauts fell to Mike Clemens, who had 116 on the regular season. Terry Greer also was the first pro professional wide receiver to have more than 2,000 yards in receptions during the regular season. And I believe the big year for Greer, he was picked as an all-star. Here's Jock climbing, catching one over the middle. And down at the 43 for a first down for the Alouettes. So this is the first time they have been able to put back-to-back -back big plays together in quite some time. Well, you, you talk about too little, too late, but Jock Climbing, I, I guess you can find something out of this. After three quarters of studying Toronto's defense, they finally found a spot that they can go to. Climbing, one of the Alouettes, though, that said we had to be sharp from the outset today. And... They couldn't afford too many two and outs against Doug Flutie, and those words have been prophetic. Pringle, left side, cuts back down to the 40, and he has three to four, and again, Benson in on the tackle. 
And I tell you, you can see the frustration in the Montreal offensive line on the running play. What's unique about this Argo team, though, is the size of these marquee players. Cunningham, uh, dangerous 5'7", 160-pounder. Clements at 5'6". Ham, Pringle. And he stopped up on a sure tackle by Adrian Smith. You know, and I and I notice a gleam in your eye when you're walking between those two players because you, you get to stand in, you get to look down at them while you're interviewing them. Can't catch him, though. <laughs> Pringle, I mean, he's been shut down for the most part this afternoon. He picks up the first down on this plate, but there's no run after the catch. Tim Cofield, one of the all-time great pass rushers in the CFL, was lost late in the season to Toronto with a vertebrae, vertebrae problem in his neck that could challenge his career. Three straight first downs for the Alouettes, their best drive of the day, ham scrambling and forced out of touch. Oscar Giles, Demetrius Maxey, their names have been prominent this afternoon. Well, the trenches have been prominent for Toronto this afternoon, offensively and defensively. Both sides have been getting off the ball, dominating the line of scrimmage. Paul Mazzotti, I guess, making reservations for Toronto, for Hamilton next week. It'll be a big thrill for a Hamilton area guy like Paul Mazzotti. Should be the final play of the third quarter. Second and 11, Montreal. with some time. Rob Waldrop is there, and Ham escapes that and throws and has a completion, but Tracy Ham was beyond the line of scrimmage. That's Denny Montana, who has the first catch of the game. He had the touchdown last week, but I think Tracy Ham was over the line of scrimmage when he delivered the football. I tell you, Tracy really doesn't have any confidence right now in his wideouts because Nigel Williams Legal was open. forward pass. Montreal number eight. Second down repeated. Nigel Williams was open at about the 15-yard line and kept working back towards Tracy Ham, and Tracy Ham would not deliver the ball to him. And, and that's what happens when you don't keep all the receivers in the passing scheme. You just don't want to go to him. really cost and, and it goes a lot with their inability to utilize the wideouts this is a team that can't fall too far behind especially when the running game is not on track well also the offensive line is built for running they're not built for sprint out passing and that's one of the things that Tracy Ham can do is it, that he can sprint out throw the football when you have a lot of 300 pound offensive linemen they like to stay closely compact inside and they haven't been able to offer him that protection this afternoon We'll get a great look. Watch Nigel Williams at the right of your screen. Now, he is open. There's nothing between he and Tracy Ham. But Tracy Ham elects not to throw him the football, and he crosses the line of scrimmage prior to throwing the pass, and they lose the yardage on the illegal play. Now, when we... Tracy Ham on the sidelines, when we talk to Bob Price about how this thing might unfold he said the worst case scenario is if we lose control of the line of scrimmage and if we're not running and they are and that has been the case today and Bob Price's worst nightmares have been realized this afternoon well Bob Price thought that he would be in this football game he, he thought his team played well enough last week they didn't dominate the game versus Hamilton but he felt with another week that they had a chance to come in here and challenge this high-powered Toronto offense but his defense has just not been able to answer the call this afternoon we're 15 minutes away from a decision in the East final and the beginning of the Western final from McMahon Stadium the Eskimos and the Stampeders and where are the Stampeders starting to loosen up as they renew their great rivalry in the West Mike Pringle straight up the middle on the second and 20 carry got it down to the 30 yard line so Pringle with the pickup of 13 
as the third quarter comes to an end. Argos with 12 in the first quarter, 14 in the second, 10 more in the third, and Don Matthews' team in control. Welcome back to the Sky Dome. This was the message on the Jumbotron just moments ago. Conrad Holloway proposing to his girlfriend, Courtney, down on one knee here at the Argo bench. She thought for a moment, and then she accepted. Conrad Holloway and his girlfriend, Courtney, engaged to be married here before the big crowd at the Sky Dome with much of the focus here on the sideline and not on the football field. What do they say about life imitating sport or sport imitating life? Conrad Holloway, big moment in his life here, back in Toronto. Argos can't lose today. <laughs> a third down and seven for the Alouettes from the Toronto 30. And they're gambling, flag down. There was some movement along the line, and that pass knocked down by Johnny Harris. And we'll await the ruling on the flag. Holloway, a quarterback for the Argos for their 83 Grey Cup team when they beat the BC Lions, coached by Don, Don Matthews. Matthews. It wasn't a bad game. It was an outstanding. It's actually the first Dome Grey Cup ever played in Canada. 1983, the Argonauts won that game 18 to 17. A couple of years Outside. later. Toronto 61. John Raposo, the U of T graduate, offside. And so it'll be third and two. Harris making a break on that ball, and you can see Armstrong not working back towards the football, and that's always a problem with receivers, is that they have to close the gap between them and the quarterback, making sure a defensive back doesn't have an opportunity to make a break on the ball. Raposo, a two-time Metro Trophy winner, is the top defensive lineman in the CIAU. Ham in trouble, gets it away. as Donald Smith lowered the boom. Donald Smith has a, enjoyed an outstanding season on the corner for Toronto this season. Played last year down in Memphis. Started his CFL career in Winnipeg as a defensive back. And he's one of those guys that finds quiet time away from football in his drawings and paintings. And he's done a lot of artwork on his teammates this season. Objectional conduct, he, Montreal 57. That First time down. he pasted Nigel Williams on the play. Alfred Payton took exception to the extended celebration of this. the hit by Smith oh, and baby. was penalized. It's not a host. Well, Alfred Payton has done that before as we get a look at the stats, and it's been a one-sided game. 366 yards passing, and for a team that loves to run the football, only 50 yards on the ground for Montreal and eight, ter eight first downs in the game. You cannot have eight first downs and expect to be in a football game in the fourth quarter. Doug Flutie remains the quarterback. 36-0 lead. In the fourth quarter, over the middle, that's Masadi. And Masadi dropped the ball, the Alouettes have it. Not yet. Well, they still loose, and now it's Tracy, confirmed. Tracy Gravely came up with the loose ball on the play. Tracy Gravely make that Douglas Kraft. The cornerback was the last one in to pick up the football. So the Alouettes will get it back. At the 35. And yeah, this, this has been uncommon of uh, Mazzotti. Two fumbles this afternoon by the receiver who had his third 1,000-yard receiving season, consecutive receiving season this year to put the ball down on the floor here at Sky Dome. But hustling still on defense, Montreal comes up with the big turnover. Third time today the Argos have fumbled the football away. Let's see if the Alouettes can convert and get on the board. Mike Pringle. Pringle gets outside, and he is met near the first down marker by Ed Berry, and that looks like a gain of nine for Pringle, and that would be his best along the ground since, well, early in the first quarter. Well, Chris, I understand a team trying to prove his point and establish something, but they're beyond trying to establish the running game right now. You're down by 36 points with 13 minutes to go in the game. You need quick scores, not grinding out the ball on the ground scores. Second and short, that long out, and that's Chris Armstrong. He'll have the first down 
and dropped at the 25. And I'm not sure that the Alouettes have been any deeper than this all day. This is their deepest penetration, but also at this point, they're starting to show some imagination in their offense. Uh, a hit screen out to Chris Armstrong. You're running a toss to Fry and play to Pringle, but they've moved down inside the red zone for the first time at the 15-yard line. First down, Alouettes. Ham overthrowing Montana. He had the clinching touchdown last week. He was not the intended receiver. A ball that was intended for Chris Armstrong, and that goes back to the point that I was making earlier. A two-receiver offense, Montana just happened to be at the right place at the right time, and you could see the, the timing problem that he had with Montana on that last play. Montana stopped short, and the ball was high. Peter Voss is concerned about his offense. You can see the frustration on his face. His offense has been totally shut down by this Toronto defense this afternoon. Well, they've relied on the run, and again, we've made the point this is not a team that plays catch up from large margins uh, eight in the league in passing just three yards more than the Saskatchewan Rough Riders there's a timeout on the field we'll be right back to Sky Dome. we're back at Sky Dome the only question right now here is whether or not Montreal will break the goose egg second and ten from the Toronto 15 yard line well, you know, you talk about moral victories, and I don't, I don't think there's ever been one established on, a, on the losing side of the football because it's a W and an L, and only winner from this game will go on to next week. It's been a big day for the CFL back in Toronto, where the fans have come out in the largest numbers of the season. An enormous walk-up today. They really jammed the ticket booths. Late arriving crowd, but this will be the biggest walk-up they've had all year long. Ham on second and ten into the end zone, picked off, and Barry has the interception. And the goose egg remains on the board. And I tell you, Chris, Nigel Williams was open here on the near side of the field, and if Ham had decided to go that way instead of jock climbing, Ed Berry would have not come up with the interception, but marvelous coverage by Ed Berry, knowing that he's going to go to one of the inside guys and maintaining his position in coming up with the turnover. Ed Berry, a nine-year veteran of the CFL, 33 years of age. You know, Ed loves keat shooting. That was like picking one off. That evens the turnover count on the day, but not much else is even here at Sky Dome this afternoon. Under 12 minutes to go, and Flutie remains in. And here's Jimmy Cunningham, dancing outside. Pulls him down at the 41. That's another completion for Flutie. 30 or 31 so far today. Well, there have been a couple of playoff shutouts. And Montreal have been involved in one before. That was the 30th completion for Doug Flutie on the afternoon. The record in a playoff game is 35. Held by a former Argonaut. Mike Kerrigan did it with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Oh, bet man, and I say that he's in reach and he'll get it. Drummond stopped after a short game. Well, Doug Flutie likes to go the distance. He went three quarters last week against Hamilton, and then Markel Fleetwood came in. But it looks like Flutie wants to take as many snaps as possible to get ready for the Grey Cup, especially after the two-week layoff. Yeah, he, he took the layoff, and he knew he was going to need some work. The thing about it, though, Doug Flutie has been sharp. He has been crisp. He has not missed a beat, and his offense has responded, and the big guys up front are enjoying it. I just wouldn't expect Flutie to carry the ball himself much more today. Took a hit earlier in the second half. That pass knocked out at the line. Grant Carter got a paw on it. Well, Flutie approaching some big numbers. Well, he's right in there. Reggie Slack did that in a game last year down in Baltimore. He actually set a record in that game where he attempted 51 passes. Mike Kerrigan, you spoke about down the road in Hamilton, completed 35 in a game, which is the record, which is still in reach of Doug Flutie with 10 and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Third and nine. 
Matthews gesturing at Flutie. I'm not sure whether that was a signal that he's done for the day or not. Vanderchat to Lewis Fight. And Fight up to the 43-yard line where the Alouettes go back to work still trying to produce its first points as we close in on the start of the Western Final from McMahon Stadium in Calgary. Eskimo quarterback Danny McManus warming up at Frosty McMahon Stadium where spot-built monsters, Nike Sharks, maybe even screw nails, the shoes du jour this afternoon. It is the Western Final as Wally Buono watches on. The Stampeders and the Eskimos coming up at 4 Eastern immediately following this East Final from the Sky Dome in Toronto. Well, we're back in Toronto on a gorgeous mid-November Sunday afternoon where the hometown Argonauts have feasted on Tracy Ham and the Alouettes and Ham nailed from behind by Reggie Gibbons and knocked to the turf with under 10 minutes to play. And Chris, this is something I thought that Tracy should have done much earlier in the game is run with the football because when Tracy Ham runs with the football, he finds the comfort level because he knows at that point that he has the defense sitting back being non-aggressive. And when you don't run until 10 minutes to go in the football game, the game generally is out of hand. It's a first down for the Alouettes at their own 52. Michael Souls and Souls stretches out down to the Argo 52 yard line and that's Michael's first reception of this afternoon and he was the third leading receiver on this Alouette team coming into the game and Tracy Ham, Michael Souls have not done the things that you would expect you haven't seen Tracy run the ball and you haven't seen Michael Souls be involved but the offensive line it's been a leisure second half for this group and, and these guys deserve it I'm talking about when you hand out the game ball you walk into that section of the locker room and it's front, so, so notably known front. as the fat guys give them a football He's they even got the legs crossed at this point. Comfortable over there. Jock Pliny, the catch, and a first down for Montreal at the Argo 44. Well, what, what Toronto is doing right now is they're playing a very soft in the back end until they get down towards the red zone. You recall the last drive when Ed Berry jumped the route on Jock Pliny and came up with the interception, but right now they're sitting back in that zone, giving Montreal those underneath passes and closing and make the stop. down Alouettes. Pringle met by Waldrop and O'Shea and again they are able to contain last year's outstanding player in the CFL. And I guess this system in Montreal via Baltimore has been in place so long is that they just have a point to prove that they want to establish the run. All things aside regardless of the score they're going to prove to you when the game is over that they can run the football on you. Second and seven. And Ham throws the football and picked off. There is a flag down. This will likely be interference against the Argonauts as Johnny Harris returns it. Stopped by Mark Dixon. There was contact. The Argos will argue that they were pursuing the ball. Donnie Wilson closed on the ball and came over the back along with Adrian Smith on the play. But this is one where Nigel Williams didn't come back to the football. He has to close that gap. He just sits down, and the defensive back is able to fight through him, but gets the interference call. Forward pass interference. Toronto number 12. First down. Adrian Smith comes through on the ball, but Nigel Williams is just standing there. But look at the athletic ability of Harris as he concentrates on the ball once it reflects off, off of his knees and returns it down the field. Mike Wissacombe down on the Fight field, who is the center for Montreal. Hate the cold weather? That's why you'll love starting your car with the remote car starter. This week it's just $99.99, only at Canadian Tire. Doug Flutie, Dwayne Divin, 
attrition, running over some of the offensive schemes with an eye to the Great Cup game now. Well, it's a shoe in Dwayne Demetrician, who had his most outstanding game of the season here versus Saskatchewan when he had seven receptions for 118 yards. And Mike Wissacombe coming off, clasping that left hand as he tries to make the tackle on Harris. Looked like he might have jammed his hand in the turf when he fell. Mike Jovanovich, another former Argonaut, will come in at center now with Wissacombe out. And he'll most likely do the snapping, he or Mike Southern. James Don Matthews has said it's a completely different team. He's left Baltimore. They moved to Montreal. 15 players left from that team that won the Great Cup last year. But do you think his knowledge of some of the systems and and what the Alouettes took from Baltimore has helped the Argonauts this afternoon? I think because he, he built the core of that team. He, he knew what it was, the infrastructure of the team was. And so he knew the type of style of play that they would play. And basically, it's the same play they have here in Toronto. They just executed better this season. First and 10 of the gift to Pringle, and the yardage tough up the middle as he gets down to the 26. You know, to even go more on that point, and you talk about knowing what they do, the nuances of that team, he brought in Robert Drummond, who had been a backup back in Montreal, and Bob Price here, who is now the head coach in Montreal, who was his defensive coordinator in Baltimore. But Robert Drummond, the same type of back that Mike Pringle was, a, a big back who could run over people. Second and six. Steamboats for Ham and throws a completion. That's Denny Montana, the Montreal native, graduate of Concordia University. Robert Drummond had performed well for Matthews in Baltimore. He brought him in, made him his marquee guy out of the backfield. He had a marquee receiver in Chris Armstrong. Mike Clemens assumed that role in the Argonaut offense. And the guys have messed together. He had a dominating offensive line. If you recall, everyone talked about the size. You see the seven receptions, the size of that Baltimore offensive line over the past two years. It's almost a carbon copy here in Toronto now with this massive offensive line that they have. But you have some guys who can run. And if you have players that can run on the offensive line and you have a quarterback like Doug Flutie, you have a very powerful offense. And Flutie continues to get ready for next week. That's the competitiveness of Doug Clue. He is a complete competitor. The game is never over until that final gun sounds. Third and a yard, and the Alouettes have Ham plunging for the first down to keep it alive as they try and get on the board. Down to 6.15 to go here in the fourth quarter. And again, stay with us. The Western final coming up next. Edmonton and Calgary. And this is where you, you don't like to go if, if your weak of heart is down in the trench. I mean, with the guys with their hands in the dirt, there's a lot of body contact down there. You've talked a lot about the offensive line, but the Zargo defense has been outstanding today. There were some questions about if they could stop the run. Here's a ball into the end zone. Touchdown. Nigel Williams. Tracy Ham and the Owls are finally on the board. And Ham shake it up. Looks like the Right elbow may have been nicked on the play. He took a shot on that from a helmet just as he released the football. But a beautiful pass by Tracy Ham to get that ball right over the top to Nigel Williams. That's a very dis difficult pass. It's to drop it over the shoulder of the defensive back. He sat in the pocket. He had the time. And he released the ball. And Williams made the catch. And talked earlier about him not going to Williams or Montana. You go to him late, but the game is out of hand. Baker adds the extra point, so the Alouettes took 54 and a half minutes before they could hit the scoreboard at Sky Dome. 36 to 7, Argonauts. Tracy Ham getting attention from the bench. You'll see as Oscar Giles comes through, as Tracy Ham throws the ball in his follow-through, Giles gets a helmet right on that tricep area of Tracy Ham, and he goes down, grimacing in some pain. So the Alouettes getting set to kick off to Toronto when we started the afternoon. Clements returned to kick off. This will be a short kick attempt. Clements went flying in the air, and who comes down with the ball? Looked like Dwayne Demetrician came up with the football. Argos have it. 
at the Montreal 51. And it looks like Doug Flutie is back out at quarterback. He's going to finish what he started. And it was Demetrician. So he's done a marvelous job of directing this Toronto offense. You'll see right here, the key to this is going up, getting the ball at his highest point. Mike Clemens couldn't handle it, but Demetrician hustles back in and comes up with the loose ball. Twenty-eight thousand three hundred ninety at Sky Dome today, and this result, one would think, would guarantee the sellout next week at Ivor Wynn Stadium. Look at those numbers on the day. Doug Flutie, one of his best afternoons as a Toronto Argonaut, and when it means the most. Here's Pinball with a rare carry today, and he's down to the forty-one. Mike Clements near a first down. Well, the Argos are in. Will it be Calgary or will it be Edmonton? What we do know is when Toronto met the two Alberta teams this year, the football games were terrific. They were two marvelous games. The game here at Sky Dome, which was the one-point ball game that Jimmy Cunningham broke wide open, and the game in Calgary where Danny Barrett came off the bench to preserve the victory for Calgary. Jimmy Cunningham had a field day at Sky Dome against Calgary, 186 yards in putt returns. First down carry, and again, it's Clements. Grant Carter there, Tracy Gravely being on the tackle. You know, you think about all the marvelous things that Mike Clemens has done throughout his professional career. He's only had one 100-yard rushing game, and that was a vers versus the Baltimore franchise in 94. There's Mike Withicombe of the Alouettes, uh, obviously out of this football game, his arm in a sling. The Alouette medical staff saying he has a third-degree separation of his left shoulder, which is the worst possible separation you can have. No good news on that side of the field all day. Now Flutie, and he goes down instead of taking a hit from Grant Carter. You think about Mike Withicombe, I mean, this has to be a very frustrating season for him. Last year's most outstanding offensive lineman in the CFL with, as a member of the Baltimore franchise and moving on into Montreal. And it was his rookie season last year, and this year it just didn't end up the way it did last season. We'll celebrate a birthday on Monday and was hoping to do it in Hamilton. That won't be the case. Well, the story of the game on the line of scrimmage has been dominated by the Argos. And now Vanderjat will punt third and 13. Vanderjat angling the punt. And it bounces back. Picked up at the 30, and there'll be a flag for no yards as Raposo takes his man down. Just a 12-yard punt because of the bounce back and no return. Well, there was a crush at the ticket wickets today, and fans might want to get on that phone right now no to yard. make sure. Toronto 61. They get tickets for Ivor Wynn because there'll be a run of tickets in Toronto now with the Argos in their first Grey Cup final in five years. Well, I'll tell you one thing about the game next week in Hamilton, Chris. There won't be any shortage of offensive productivity. A couple of the little big men who played such a huge role today. With I that Did he just say someone was scared of him? Let's get it up at 7 o'clock right after the West Coast game. Don't Can we get him in after the game, man? In the game of football, that's a featherweight boxing match. Sounds like they're getting ready to watch the Western Final. Calgary and Edmonton was fights now into the game, replacing Pringle. Doesn't matter, Mike O'Shea's there to make another tackle. Under three minutes to go in the East Final. Under three minutes to go till the Grey Cup berth for Toronto. Well, they've got the Zambonis going at McMahon Stadium, clearing the field, getting ready for the West Final. It will be crisp, but it looks like conditions should be pretty good for the Western Final. Typical conditions for Edmonton and Calgary. And that should be a great matchup. The Eskimos winning two of the three regular season games. Back here at Sky Dome. The finishing touch is being put on this Argonaut win. Tracy Ham's gone all the way. 
That time hooking up with Lewis Fight though to the backfield. Well, he was able to produce a touchdown on his last possession. And, and I think for Tracy that he would like to be able to come in and at least get one more score on the scoreboard. Facing a third down and five yards to go. And it looks like the Alouettes will go out on their shield here as they're going to go for it on third and five. Ham over the middle and it falls incomplete. been the story of the day for Montreal unsure of their pass game Markel Fleetwood is going to come into the game and knock some dust off for Toronto well he took a few snaps two weeks ago against Hamilton playing the fourth quarter and a little bit more Markel Fleetwood has seen limited action though all season long as the understudy to Doug Flutie. I think you have to have a great understanding when Doug Flutie is the number one pivot is that your job for most part is going to be charting plays. Well, he threw a touchdown pass last week, 16 of 22. 152 yards in the game against Hamilton. And the first snap to give to Clements, who is well contained. with the Ottawa Rough Riders is at the early part of the season he was one of that revolving door of quarterbacks but he came here in Toronto as an insurance policy but with Doug's numbers this year and you see his production today he really hasn't gotten a chance upping his postseason record to seven and four what a great cup in Toronto in 92 for Calgary and he'll be trying to win one for Toronto next Sunday Clements Driving for a few extra yards as he ran into Tracy Gravely. Mike Gauthier, Johnny Harris, and the whole defensive gang congratulating each other. It's Adrian Smith. You know, Chris, when Michael O'Shea signed here with Toronto, that was that was one of the major factors. He wanted an opportunity to, to play in a Grey Cup during his career. And he felt that coming back after his free agent try down south, that this presented the best opportunity signing here in Toronto, and it has panned out for him. Here's Fleetwood. Got underneath the tackle of Alfred Payton, throwing to Clemens. And Mike Clemens will have the first down and more. How about that? was a third down gamble for the Argos. And it ends up with a 19-yard pinball pickup. One of the things that defensive players, especially linemen, have to understand when you're coming in and you're trying to get on a, a hit on a quarterback is just take your time, come in, and pull him down. Peyton came in overzealous. Fleet, Fleetwood got away, and Mike Clemens had a chance to do his thing once again. Seven catches today, 69 yards. He had the opening kickoff. Go for a touchdown. You know, Grant Carter led the league in sacks this season, but he's been a non-factor this afternoon. Here's pinball again. You know, a few weeks ago, uh, when he looked ahead at what might be, he said, you know, we're going to be the visiting team in Hamilton, even though it's just down the road. He says, Hamilton fans are not going to be cheering for us. It'll be interesting to see what kind of reaction Michael O'Shea gets when he goes back. He better hire some bodyguards, I think. Clements is headed for the sidelines and a big ovation for pinball. Fleetwood gives off. This is J.P. Esquerdo breaking it outside. Esquerdo to the goal line and they're going to mark him out inside the one. And that was his first carry of the season and he carried that ball like he had been in the backfield before. He had had one reception coming into the game but J.P. once he took the handoff he did a great job of reading his blockers and setting up the defenders getting down to the goal line. Well, he was one of the guys here in 91. Mike Clements cheering him on. It's first and goal from the one with 37 seconds to play. So Fleetwood 
trying to engineer a touchdown march. And he'll keep himself. And Markel Fleetwood's in for the score. There, but Flutie's a much better passer, I would say. And I guess Doug has been in the end zone so frequently that celebrations are not a part of his repertoire. But this has been a, a game completely dominated by Toronto this afternoon in every phase. It started out with the special teams on the opening kickoff. Then the offensive line established the line of scrimmage that they were going to be in charge all afternoon. Doug Flutie, 380 plus yards passing and a touchdown. Great play defensively. Toronto on its way to the breakup. Well, the Argos are going to add a little insult to injury. Doug Flutie's going to attempt the convert. And Flutie puts it through. And straightaway kicker also. <laughs> well, you've seen it all now. That's Don Matthews. He got the ice water treatment on the sidelines. This old throw back to Dave Cutler days in Edmonton when Don Matthews was the defensive coach out there. Doug Flutie didn't have the square toe shoe on but was able to get it through a little celebration after the touchdown and Toronto has a lot of reason to celebrate and Don Matthews got an early shower in the game. That's one he doesn't mind taking though. You know when you get the chance to play for it all, you can afford to get a little bit wet. So Flutie, a couple of touchdowns and a convert. 43 to 7. Now how would you score that in hockey? I'd score it as a win for the guys in blue. <laughs> Over the 35, a 26-yard return. Edmondson and Calgary still to come. I know Flutie took great pride the other day in saying that of the four teams remaining, the Argos were 5-1, and one, and uh, he felt they had proven their point against the best of the league. I don't know what happened to us, though. Here's two playoff games, and the combined score is what, about 111 to 14. We've been on the side of watching uh, two great offensive performances last week. Danny McManus at Commonwealth Stadium this afternoon. Doug Flutie at his best. Uncharacteristic in what we've had to see this season. It's been probably the most competitive year in about 15 in the league from number one through nine in the league. So who would have thought come playoff time the games would be so lopsided? Well, coming into this game, everyone felt that these four teams that were remaining were the best games that you could have and that you would have a situation where it would possibly come down to the last two minutes of a ball game. In the first two minutes of this game, this one was decided. And the clock running down. Tracy Ham, one last pass perhaps. Fight. Dropped at the 47, time for one play. Well, it was 42 to three in the Eastern Final five years ago. The Argos went on to beat Calgary in the Grey Cup game in Winnipeg. Well, it's 43-7 today, and the Argos might play Calgary, or will it be Edmonton? Next Sunday in the Grey Cup. And it's the Doug Flutie factor once again, 1992. He left BC and went to Calgary, took that team to a Grey Cup victory here at Sky Dome. 1996, he left Calgary and came to Toronto. And now, once again, he's on the door of winning another Grey Cup. Overshadowed by Tracy Ham a year ago in the championship game. This time it's Ham congrat congratulating Flutie. A couple of guys who have enormous respect for each other. Two tremendous competitors right there. They had an opportunity to match up last year. This year, it's going to be Doug Flutie alone in the Grey Cup versus a challenger from the West. But right now, Doug Flutie would have to be favored. Well, they work together.
together a year ago, and now they walk across the field. Bob Price is about to congratulate Don Matthews. There's the commissioner, Larry Smith. I'd like to present Bob Nicholson, the Eastern Division Championship Dixon Trophy. Congratulations to the Toronto Argonauts. Fans, draw your attention to center field. The commissioner, Larry Smith, presenting the Dixon Trophy to Argo President Bob Nicholson and the rest of the Toronto Argonauts. It's that bigger cup they're more interested in. Yeah, the one that is going to be presented next week. I mean, that's what everyone wants, a piece of the Holy Grail, the Grey Cup. And it will be presented next, next week in Hamilton about 9.35 in the evening. Pinball Clemens as he accepts the James X. Dixon Trophy from Coach Don Matthews. Mike Clemens, this trophy was first presented in 1912. Lots of history, and now you get it again. Second time in five years. Ooh, been a long time coming. It's so sweet. Appreciate it so much more the second time around. Mike, tell me about the opening kickoff return, 90 yards for a touchdown. That really seemed to set the tone here today. Well, as in all, all year long, it was the guys in front of us that make it all happen. Jimmy and I just follow our box. They opened it wide open, had a great scheme against them, and it opened up, and, and uh, we scored. What did that do for your team, and did you sense a, a lull on the Montreal side? Well, I don't know. I, 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 uh, w w w after it happened, I was like, please don't get complacent, team. Please don't get complacent. It's only 7 nothing. There's not much time at all going off the clock. This is going to be a long ball game. But the guys regroup stayed, kept their heads in it, and kept going. You know, there's an old saying that uh, patience is a virtue. You had the patience to stick around. Five other players from the 91 Grey Cup team are here, and you're going back again. I sure is sweet. And I like to say, too, if I was showboating a little bit at the end, I was only excited. I didn't mean to, to uh, be at all detrimental to the Montreal players. It's just so sweet. Not at all, Mike. You're one of the most gracious players in the CFL. Congratulations. Thank you a lot, Mark. Appreciate it. Mike Pinball, Clemens of the Argonauts. Big winners here today, 43-7. to 7. And let's uh, throw it to commercial now when we come back. The man who was the architect of this victory here today, Doug Flutie at the Sky Dome when we come back. Three to seven win over the Montreal Alouettes. As previewed and mentioned, Doug Flutie, the man who directed this uh, slaughter here today. Doug, it looked like he had receivers open all afternoon. They ran a lot of zone, and we did a good job adjusting routes. Guys sitting in holes and drifting, and uh, we did an excellent job of attacking the weak side of their defense today. Uh, before, we had burned them on a lot of crossing routes, so they went to a lot of zone. And our guys, even strong side and weak side, both both sides, they were doing a great job of reading coverage and sitting down in holes. This must feel really good, Doug, to take a team that was 4-14 four and 14 a year ago, have a 15-3 and three season, a big win in the final, and go to the Grey Cup. It does. Uh, it feels great. I've been to the Grey Cup before, and uh, you know, this game is the stepping stone. This is a big touchdown late, or first touchdown in the second half, I believe, and uh, we just ran a quarterback counter off a look that we run the shovel pass off of, and it was an easy walk into the end zone. What happens in a football game like this where a team uh, is scored on on the opening kickoff and seems to be down? I think you got to bounce right back and try to put a drive together and answer, at least with a field goal. Uh, but our defense stepped up and played so well, it made it easy for the offense. We, we can play conservatively and do what we have to do to move the ball and not take a lot of chances because our defense was playing so well. All right, Doug, fine game. Congratulations. We'll see you in Hamilton next weekend. Thanks a lot. Appreciate Doug it. Doug Flutie and the Argos winning big here today, 43-7 to over the Montreal Alouettes. Coming up next, the Eskimos and the Stampeders in the Western Final. All right, Mark, thank you very much. And uh, you just saw the skyline of the city of Calgary, the smoke standing clear, or standing still, I should say, give you an idea of just how chilly it is here today. Jeff Garcia all set to start a quarterback for the Stampeders against the Eskimos. We'll talk about field conditions in a moment, but first, here's our game day analyst, Chris Walby, to say just how surprised uh, he was with the outcome in Toronto today, at least how lopsided the score well, I think, was. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, Scott, is we made so much during the pregame broadcast about how Montreal's defense was going to control the game. Peyton and Carter. 
nothing was said about Gibbons and Maxey on Toronto's defense, and I think that was the big difference. Toronto's defensive line gave Tracy Ham all he could handle, and of course their offense was superb, but nothing was said of Montreal's, uh, uh, Toronto's defense, excuse me, and they did a superb game. And Chris, what about the Argo offense? Anytime you head into the Great Cup game on the tail end of a 36-point victory, you've got momentum, and the Argos do. Well, they've been riding high for the last couple weeks. They've had a couple buys. You figure with buys, sometimes you get rusty. They seem to just get sharper, and Don Matthews has got them rolling. Doug Flutie is sharp as I've ever seen him. They got a whole tool chest of, of stars. I mean, hey, they're going to be tough to beat, but look out. All right, here in Calgary, the McMahon Stadium grounds crews in the process of clearing off the field for the third time today. Takes about 33 minutes to do it, so kickoff here has been delayed just a bit, but the wait will be well worth it in order to provide the Eskimos and the Stampeders with a clear surface on which to contest the West Division final. Um, Chris, this is uh, not a bad field today, and you've got a piece of footwear that'll be the, the shoe of choice for most of the players today. Footwear should not be that big an issue. Well, this here is a Nike Destroyer, and I think we've been on the turf, and the turf right now is in great shape, and I think what happens is this is a, a, the Destroyer, and all you can see is the nubs are a little higher. They're a little pointed as opposed to a regular turf shoe where they're cut off flat, and this is the shoe of choice out there today. So there'll be no need for staples, screws, or any other foreign stuff. No, There's peanut not butter cups, nothing. Not the league uses these, right? Well, you got to use them. You know what? Like I said before, whatever it takes to win, baby. All right, Chris. Let's go back to Toronto now, and here is Chris Cuthbert. Well, Scott, a couple of guarantees I think I could make safely. Number one is that the Western final will be closer than the East. And number two, no matter what happens out West today, the Toronto Argonauts are going to be favored going into the Great Cup game. You know, they had an outstanding, dominating performance this afternoon. And it all started off with the opening kickoff when Mike Clemens set the tempo of the game. And he took the opening kickoff back 90 yards. Clemens uh, did that, and it didn't look like Montreal ever recovered. The one guy that doesn't show up in the scoring today is uh, was a huge factor, and that's Robert Drummond, who's quite a weapon. Let's have a look, though, at the 90-yard scamper by Mike Clemens. And this is Daryl Adrellens, the special teams coach specialty, special teams. And it's such a huge factor in CFL games. You were talking about Robert Drummond, over 200 yards in total offense this afternoon. Well, it was a decisive factor last year in the Grey Cup game, and it was again today. Special teams, and we'll look for that at Iberwind next week. Right now, let's go to Mark. That's the scene inside the Argonaut dressing room. A jubilant Argonaut victory here today, 43-7 to in the East. There's the damage on the scoreboard. The Argonauts defeating the Montreal Alouettes 43 to 7 this afternoon in the Eastern Final. Right from the get-go, it was all Toronto. The 90-yard run back by Mike Pinball Clemens. There's Donnie Wilson celebrating a dominant defense. Some talk the Eskimos have the best defense in the country. The Argos saying in the press before this game that they were out to prove that in fact with a 15 and 3 record and a 43 to 7 win in the Eastern Final, they are the dominant defense in the CFL. We're back with more of the post-game celebration in Toronto, where the Argos win big right after this. Back in Toronto as the Argos sip the bubbly from the James S. Dixon Trophy. Goes back to 1912, one of the oldest trophies in pro sport in North America. Mike O'Shea in the locker room there also enjoying the celebration here this afternoon. He's going back to Hamilton, the former Tiger Cat, next weekend as a member of the Argonauts. The Argos winning here this afternoon over Montreal, 43-7. to They're going to the Grey Cup for the first time since 91. Now the Western final and here is Scott.